Everyone, thank you and welcome to Neighborhood Board 13. My name is Ernest Carvalho, and we'll go ahead and start this meeting at 6.01. So to my far left, I have Russ Isukani. Next to Russ, we have Laurie McCarney. Next to Laurie, we have Robert Armstrong. Next to Robert, we have Kevin Lai. Next to Kevin Lai, we have Sean Fitzsimmons. Next to Sean, we have Shulan Schubert Kwok. Then we have myself, Ernest Carvalho. And online, we have Travis Thompson. Right now, we're only missing Mr. McDonald. Yeah, but we'll go ahead and start this meeting. Uh, and my NA, Dylan. All right, thank you very much. All right, so we'll call this on um, board to order at 601. We'll go ahead and start off with a public safety reports from the Honolulu Fire Department, please. Anyone representing Honolulu Fire Department? Neighborhood board. Hi, my name is Jonathan Waltz. Are you able to hear me? Okay. Um, I'm with uh, Engine 1 Central Fire Station. Our incident statistics for June 2023. Fires, we had one structure fire, one wildland brush fire, three nuisance fires, two cooking fires, and 11 activated alarms with no fire. Emergencies, we had 105 medical, zero motor vehicle collisions with pedestrians, four motor vehicle crashes, zero mountain and ocean rescues, and one hazardous materials incident. Our safety tip of the month is regarding grilling. Since it's summertime, always use barbecue grills outside, away from doors, windows, vents, and other building openings. Keep children and pets at least three feet away from cooking areas and keep starter fluid lighters and matches out of children's reach. Cook with caution, be alert and stay at the grill while cooking. Never leave a hot barbecue unattended. Light a propane grill only with the cover open. Periodically remove grease or fat buildup in the trays below the grill so it cannot be ignited by a hot grill. Do not store or use a grill on a porch or a balcony, including any porch or balcony on an upper level of the building. Always store propane gas tanks outside of buildings or garages. Remember to properly inspect and maintain the tank fittings and tubing according to the manufacturer's instructions. Thank you. Are there any questions for Central Fire Station? All right, before we move forward, could we please have you repeat your name? My name is Jonathan Waltz, W-A-L-T-Z. All right, thank you, Mr. Waltz. Do we have anyone that have any questions from our lobby here? Hearing none, see none. Anyone on the web have any questions? Hearing none, see none. I want to thank you, Mr. Waltz. You have a group. Oh, no, excuse me. Anyone on our board have any questions? All right, seeing none. We want to thank you very much for your time. You have a great day. See you next month. You too. Thank Mr. you. With Honolulu Police Department, Lieutenant Segusio, please. Good evening, everyone, and Chair Cavallo. Um, and thank you um, for your time and patience. Uh, information I'm providing to you tonight is the statistics for your area. Uh, if you have, want more information, you can go to the public website at www.honolulupd.org. Uh, the statistical information for the past month of June is as follows. Motor vehicle thefts is down to three from the previous month. It was 16. Burglaries was five <clears throat> down from seven. Uh, thefts are 35 down from 55. Uh, UMVs or car break-ins are 14, uh, down from 40. Assaults is 16. It was the same 16 for the previous month. Sex assaults were zero. Previous was five. Graffiti cases were zero. Uh, and previous month was one. Drug cases or drug offenses were four. Previous month was three. I also checked on the categories of robberies. There were two robberies in uh, reported in the area, in the area of Fort Street Mall. Uh, and there were zero catalytic converter thefts. Uh, for the month of June, there was a, um, so the total calls for service for your area was 2031. Previous month was 3,968. Uh, so in June, there was a 1,937 less calls for service than the previous month. As predicted, uh, there were several arrests in the month of June of known street characters, which attributed to the decrease in uh, thefts and car break-ins in the area. And Chair Carvalho, I did get your email in regards to the post office situation in regards to the post office uh, vehicles being parked on the street. 
Um, I have a number. Of, I'm going to um, send it to you on the chat page um, where you can make contact with the station manager in regards to that. Um, I, I, I tried to call and leave a message, but there was no return call, but I can provide you that information. Yeah. So, uh, 4th of July celebration just passed. Uh, thankfully it was an uneventful, uh, eve, uh day, uh, in regards to the crowds at Alamona beach park and Kaka'ako Kaka waterfront. Uh, they weren't as big as the years past of Alamona shopping center sponsoring the 4th of July fireworks show. However, district one had to reallocate some of the police assets to the park. Uh, crew units, bike ETV detail, a rapid deployment force were staged in the area of the parks to make sure that uh, park birds were safe. And fourth watch units were also used to monitor for fireworks, alcohol violations, and illegal dog issues throughout the day. Uh, safety tip of the month for June is bicyclist safety. In the recent past, we have been responding to more and more uh, vehicle versus bicyclist collisions. We're asking our bicyclists to be more visible to drivers by wearing uh, reflective personal safety equipment and helmets. Most bicyclists fatalities are usually due to the riders not having helmets. Being aware of your surroundings, vehicular traffic and their movements would also prevent involuntary involuntary contact. Uh, use of hand signals and uh, would also keep the drivers informed of your moving intentions. And finally, motorists should uh, also realize that these green bicycle lanes are uh, bi-directional, two-directionals for bicyclists. At this point in time, I'm going to yield back the rest of my time and take any questions from the board and the public attendees. All right, thank you. Is anyone here in our lobby who has any questions for Lieutenant Segucio? Hearing none, seeing none, anyone online? Hearing none, seeing none, we'll go to our board members. Board member Lai, please. Thank you, Chair. And Senator Segucio, I just wanted to say thank you for the follow-up for the question last month and previous months about the green two cubic yard trash bin on River Street. I uh, appreciate your email and the images that you took. This led to a lot of discussions with Honolulu Trash Services and the manager of the adjacent property led to discussions about how this whole process started with the Caldwell administration of having that bin there for this particular building. But most interestingly found out from the property manager that now there are homeless people crawling around on the roof of that building in the evenings on uh, at River Street near hotel. So uh, we're running amok, but we're finding out about it so that we can address that again. Thank you. All right, is anyone else on our board have a question? Um, board member Fitzsimmons, please. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, I noticed that you mentioned an overall decrease in crime. Um, is that typical of summer or something else? What is your, your opinion? Uh, so there was there was several arrests that were made um, in the Chinatown area in regards to some known street characters that we were kind of suspecting involved in these types of um, criminalities. Uh, so with the effects of those arrests, uh, the crime kind of dramatically dropped at that point in time. Um, because they were in custody at that point in time. Now, where, where, they, where these people are at this point in time is is yet to be still known. Yeah, I haven't really checked on that regards. But normally during the summer months, as the weather gets warm, usually um, crime starts to spike a little bit. Um, but we were very lucky in, in, in regards to catching these guys and then causing the, the trend to go the opposite direction. All right, thank you. Board member Shulan Schubert kwok please. Uh, good evening, Lieutenant. A um, couple questions and updates. Yeah, uh, just on the Chinatown uh, area of River and Pawahi, we have a growing encampment on River, and they are pretty big parties of people. And then there's also openly um, doing drugs. So I I would like. Uh, some information on that, as well as um, the bus stop on North Hotel. That has been moved for several weeks now to the uh, Wolfart area, which we prefer because it reduces the congregation on the corner of Kekaloki and North Hotel. So I hope um, HPD will continue to push for that. Yep. And the uh, Busy bus stop on hotel on the across the way, uh, on the Marquia Market Place area, has quieted down somewhat because of the new security uh, by Marquia Marketplace. So we hate we were happy about that. 
so I just want to thank you for continuing your efforts. And please, we need more food patrol. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else on our board who would like to speak? All right, here in and I'll be the last one. So first, before I ask my question, I would like to let you know that I had um, taken hands, taken matters into my hands. So I did get a hold of the Postmaster General for this area. And I received an email from Duke Gonzalez, who's a strategic communication specialist. And they are aware of the problem and they are addressing the problem to relieve that um, traffic flow on Richards, okay? So that's taken care of, but I do appreciate it. Thank you. So now my question is, what are we doing about the safety for our community? I, on my way here, I decided to take a different route out. So I went up to Smith, um, Smith. So I went to pass Smith Baratania Park, which the Lions had adopted. So right there on the corner of Smith and Hawaii, I witnessed a drug transaction taken. Once I passed that area, I came up here on Pali and Kuki, Kukui. Right here at the sign, there were a bunch of kids smoking crack right out in the public, which was witnessed not just by me, but other board members who had passed that way, yeah? So what can we do to um, take control of that? Because we have kids at this school right in this area. Then we have our missions, um, the cathedrals and all this, you know, St. Andrews and all that right there. We need to take care of our people, our Kukuna and our Keiki, yeah? Yeah, so in that regard, um, uh, our captain and our major, Major Sung and uh, Captain Lin have um, started that initiative for um, um, Her Honor Chulan Kwok in regards to more foot patrols. So we're, we're reallocating, we're, we're going to be bringing two officers in for a, a normal foot patrol, and they're going to be generally uh, for the area between River and Fort Street. Uh, from Baratania to King Street, just in that area. So there's going to be two officers additional to the foot, so additional foot patrol. And we're also reallocating um, some, on some days, and we're not going to be notating which days, we, we kind of move it around, uh, the additional uh, bike detail to do normal bicycle patrols in the area. Uh, in regards to those situations, I'll go and check them um, after this meeting uh, in the area of Smith and Powahi. And also Kukui and Mauna Kea, did you say, sir? And then um, I'll, I'll go and make checks of those areas. Um, we're trying our very best. That's all pretty much I can say. And um, they're, they're going to be reallocating uh, two more foot officers for patrol for those areas. Yeah. Uh, and that, that'll be the last, but if you can next month, let us know what's up with the camera situation. I appreciate that, but that'll be the last. Thank you very much for your time. I do appreciate it. You have a great day and I'll see you next month. Thank you. You guys have a great night. Okay, thank you. So next we'll move to item 3A, elections of officers. So we're going to be re-electing officers for um, 2023, July 2023 to June 30th, 2024. We'll start off with chair. Do we have any suggestions for chair? Laurie? Um, I'd like to nominate Ernest Calvario as chair. All right, thank you, and I accept. Do we have any other nominations for chair? All right, seeing none, hearing none, we'll go on to a roll call vote, yes? Uh, the motion on the table is to elect Ernest Carvalho for the chair. Armstrong. Abstain. Carvalho. Carvalho. Fitzsimmons. Uh, Carvalho. Isokane. Carvalho. McDonald. Abstain. McCarney. Carvalho. Lie. Carvalho. Schubert Clark. Carvalho. And Thompson. Carvalho. All right. Congratulations, Chair. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. So next we have Vice Chair. Do we have any nominations for vice chair? Ms. Super Kwok, please. Uh, I'd like to nominate uh, Sean Fitzsimmons. All right. Sean, do you accept? I accept. All right. Do we have any other further nominations for vice chair? All right. Seeing none, hearing none, we'll have a roll call. 
The motion on the table is to elect Sean Fitzsimmons for vice chair. Armstrong. No. Carvalho. Fitzsimmons. Fitzsimmons. Um, aye. Lisa O'Connor. Fitzsimmons. McDonald. Abstain. McCarney. Fitzsimmons. Lie. Fitzsimmons. One more time. Okay. Fitzsimmons. Thank you. Schubert Clock. Office of Benz. Thompson. Fitzsimmons. All right. Congratulations. That passed. All right. Next, we have election of the treasurer. Do we have any nominations for treasurer? Oh, no, for, I mean, secretary. Go ahead, Sula and Super Squad. I'd like to nominate Ross, seeing that he's a very detailed minded CPA. <laughs> uh, thank you. I accept. All right. Thank you. Uh, do we have any further nominations for secretary? Yes. Well, I I'd like to nominate Kevin Lai. Yep. Do we have any other? All right, hearing none, we'll go ahead and a roll call vote. All right, uh, please state the name of the person you're voting for for the position of secretary. It's between Ross Isokane and Kevin Lai. Armstrong. Lai. Carvalho. Ross. Fitzsimmons. Ross. Isokane. Isokane. McDonald. Lie. McCarney. Lie. 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 Schubert Kwok. Ross. Thompson. Lie. Right, one, two, three, four, five. All right, congratulations, Mr. Lie. Uh, with five votes in favor, five to four. Thank you. All right, thank you. Next, we have treasurer. Oh, um, do we have any nominations for treasurer? It's just a thought. Uh, at Saturday's meeting, I'm not sure if you were still there. Uh, it was said from the NCO's office that there really isn't any function to the treasurer any longer. Um, May I suggest that we leave that office vacant since we don't have any financial control anyways? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's what I thought. All right, so and he did remind me we had discussed this before. The reason for um, the treasurer is, say, if I'm not here for some reason, then next one up would be Sean. If Sean's not here, the next one up would be Lai. If Lai's not here, then the last one up is is the treasurer so it, yeah i know that you wouldn't have quorum no doubt about that but you still need somebody to run a meeting because the meeting has to be run yeah so yeah so you so go ahead board member lie thank you chair uh, as you recall uh neighborhood plan permits us to elect people to officers that the board seems and deems to be necessary i propose that we create a position or at least retitle the position of treasurer to treasurer and operations officer. And I, nom I propose that so that the treasurer can actually have something to do and mainly that be to help uh, with some of the operations of our meetings, such as running a timer system so that we can help maintain our meetings run on time by tracking the amount of time that each speaker is speaking and also the amount of time that's allocated per event. Uh, we've done this in the past. It was successful. It'd be nice to have an actual role assigned to that, and I'm happy to work with whomever that will be to employ the systems that we were used a couple of years ago during COVID time to make that happen. So I'm against that, and I'm going to tell you exactly why. Because it's like having a sergeant of arms. Every time we have a sergeant of arms, what happens is the sergeant of arms has to call the meeting to stop. Then we have to take a roll call to see if we want to continue by giving people more minutes. And every time we get to that point, sometimes we have to go on. So I believe the chair controls the meeting length. And that's how I feel about it. So we are only gonna um, nominate for treasurer. Do we have any more discussions on this? Go ahead, Mr. Board Member Lai. Apologies, Chair, that's a raised hand unnecessarily. All right, 
I, so do we have any nominations for treasurer? Go ahead, Russ. I, I'd like to uh, nominate uh, Shulan. I want to nominate you. <laughs> you accept? Decline and accept. All right. Um, I, I will accept to move things. You, you accept? Okay. All right. So, any others? Not seeing none. We'll go ahead and do a roll call vote. The motion on the table is to elect Rossi Sokane for treasurer. Armstrong. Epstein. Carvalho. Sokane. Fitzsimmons. Isokane. Isokane. McDonald. Isokani. McCarney. Isokani. Lai. Isokani. Schubert Clark. Isokani. Ross. Thompson. Isokani. All right. Congratulations, Russ. All right. Thank you. And that completes item three. So we'll go ahead and move on. I'd once like to say thank you, everyone, for giving your time to this board for 2023 2024 year. But before we move on, I would like to say thank you to two of our um, members that served for quite a while. Oh, Professor Willis Moore, who's online, and Laura Sturz. I want to thank you for your time. Couldn't do that last month because no one was here. But thank you very much for giving us your time. We appreciate it. Thank you. All right, moving forward, we're going to go to new business presentation. I only went with one this month because it's a um, heavy discussion. We're going to have a discussion on Red Hill Fuel Storage Facility by Manager and Chief Engineer Ernie Lau. If we could all um, thank Ernie Lau for coming down and giving us his time. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, sorry about this. <laughs> okay, uh, you got it. Thanks, Dylan. Uh, congratulations, Chair, on the re-election, and uh, good, good afternoon, uh, good evening, members. Uh, Ernie Lam, Board of Water Supply. I also have with me today uh, Kathleen Elliott Pahinui, our Information Officer, heading our Communications Office. Um, I just wanted to give you a quick update on what's happening at Red Hill, the Navy's Red Hill fuel tanks. Uh, um, in the Halava Valley area. And this map actually shows the fuel tanks in two, uh, two rows of 10 tanks each. Each tank is uh, 250 feet tall, 100 feet in diameter, can, and can hold 12 and a half million gallons per tank. And I'm reminded by uh, Chair Cravalio, who's been on the Red Hill issue, uh, like myself, since 2014. Uh, back in 2014, it was mainly the Board of Water Supply and the Hawaii Sierra Club on this issue, trying to uh, alert people and educate people about the dangers and risk of this facility. Uh, circled in yellow are the two Navy water sources that are actually shut down uh, at this time. So the Navy has one water source called Waiava Shaft in Pearl City, that's supplying the entire joint base for Harbor Hickam. So you can recall back in 2021, shortly after Thanksgiving, uh, that Sunday after Thanksgiving, uh, their water system became contaminated with jet fuel and other petroleum products. So people that were living on joint base Pearl Harbor Hickam, about 93,000 people were exposed directly to fuel contaminated drinking water. And um, uh, about 6,000, I think, sought medical attention because of that. That's the Navy's Red Hill shaft. So a fuel leak that occurred in May of 2021 near tank number 20, which is at the very top of the tank farm, that leak actually got into a drain pipe that was broken around November, uh, uh, November 20th of 2021, and it dropped fuel and contamin fuel contaminated water almost directly over their drinking water source, Red Hill shaft, which is about 80 feet below that. One thing about these tanks, which can fit Aloha Tower in them, the bottoms of the tanks are only about 100 feet above the drinking water aquifer that both the Navy and the Board of Water Supply pump from uh, for a good part of our supply. 
Circled in red are three actually uh, board of water supply wells that we shut down back in December 2021 as a precaution because we pump from the same connected aquifer in Halawa Valley. And I didn't want to inadvertently draw fuel contaminated water into our water system and pump into the water system serving Honolulu, including where this neighborhood board serves, all the way up to Hawaii Kai. Uh, also, the Ayer Halava system, which has the Palimomi Hospital. So, by shutting those three wells down, that was our precautionary approach here to protect the safety of our drinking water. Also, back in uh, about a year later, in 2022, on November 29th, unfortunately, the, the Navy has a AFFF or firefighting foam system there to deal with petroleum fires because you can't put out a fuel fire with water. It'll just spread the fire around because water, the fuel will float on top of that water and spread the flames around. So this AFFF or this aqueous film forming foam system, they had a leak there. Uh, in it, uh, something happened when they were doing maintenance and it spilled 1300 gallons of this concentrate liquid right just outside, just inside one of the side tunnels of the Red Hill facility, uh, which is uh, underground. That concentrate contains PFAS chemicals. So on top of the petroleum contamination that we have to be concerned about and where it might be moving in our groundwater aquifer underground, it's now the issue of PFAS contamination. And this PFAS, as you heard before, per and polyfluoroalkyl substances uh, are very water soluble and they can persist for a long time in the environment. They don't break down very easily. So that, that's why they have the nickname of called uh, forever chemicals. Uh, so these chemicals have been in use in, uh, since the 1940s, but at Red Hill, they were using it in their AFFF firefighting foam system. Uh, so that's the challenge as a Red Hill. Right now, the latest update on what's happening, there are three major things that you should be aware of. Uh, number one is defueling. Emptying out right now, there's still 104 million gallons of diesel and jet fuel still stored in that facility. And the Navy is planning to defuel or empty out the tanks and the pipelines. Uh, so the defueling uh, plan has uh, been submitted, uh, I think around uh, in June, and it's gotten conditional approval from the EPA and the Department of Health. So right now the Navy I think heard the concerns of the community and tried to basically move up their timeline for getting the fuel out of there. From 2024, sometime in 2024, they will actually start, cross our fingers, middle of October of this year and be completed by January of 2024. The catch here is they've told us that they won't be able to review, remove all 104 million gallons, that there still be uh, about 100,000 to 400,000 gallons of fuel still remaining in the facility that they cannot get out through gravity flowing it from three miles inland from these tanks down to Pearl Harbor onto tanker ships. So that's still the issue. And we need to, I think, continue to urge them to uh, get rid of that remaining 100,000 to 400,000 gallons. The problems that created uh, the contamination at Joint Base Pearl Harbor Hickam for almost 100,000 people, that might have involved maybe 5,000 gallons of fuel getting into their drinking water source. So 100,000 to 400,000 gallons of fuel is still a substantial amount of fuel. Back in 2014, the leak from tank number five, uh, Chair Cavallo, I think it was about 27,000 gallons of uh, jet fuel too. Uh, so we need to press. That is actually covered in their closure plan. So you have the defueling plan. You have another plan called the closure plan, which is a long-term closure of the facility, which is in accordance to the Secretary of Defense's order issued back in March of 2021. The closure plan, the latest version of it, there was a real positive to it. They now are talking about removing the three miles of pipeline in an underground tunnel from the fuel tanks to Pearl Harbor, taking the three large pipelines out permanently. The catch is their estimates are, it's gonna be three years or more to do that. So I wanna to continue to encourage them to shorten that timeline 
to finally get them 100,000 to 400,000 gallons out of there, have this facility closed completely. Uh, there is discussion about beneficial reuse. And for myself at the Board of Water Supply, our position is this facility needs to be permanently disabled so they can never change their minds, perhaps under a new president or new secretary of defense to bring fuel back to this facility. Uh, so removing the pipelines is a good first step, but also maybe removing the quarter inch steel liner in each of these 20 tanks, at least portions of it and filling it up with some inert material. So they really can't use it again. So I am not really an advocate for beneficial reuse uh, because I don't want to chance the possibility of this facility be reactivated in the future. The third area is uh, the EPA, the Navy and the Defense Logistics Agency recently executed a 2023 uh, consent order, a new consent order, giving the EPA also regulatory authority on the defueling of this facility. Uh, that is in addition to the Department of Health's emergency order that they issued uh, back in May of last year, their final order. So now the EPA is a player here. Uh, so what we're trying to do here is still stay on top of this issue for, on behalf of our community. It is a important issue that is not gonna go away soon. And the simple fact is this facility over its history may have already leaked at least 180,000 gallons of fuel uh, into the environment and in some place, perhaps between the bottoms of the tank and the top of the water table, about 100 feet of unsaturated volcanic rock like a sponge and it'll continue to feed and drip down into the aquifer and contaminate the aquifer. Um, there's still at least 180,000 gallons of fuel that was released. So this brings up maybe the fourth area. And I, I, was, I misspoke about three things. The fourth thing is remediation or cleanup. Identify where this fuel is in the environment whether in that unsaturated volcanic rock below the tanks on the top of the aquifer, the water table, or in the aquifer itself. Identify where it's, it is and where it's moving and clean it up. Uh, that is the fourth issue that we move on. So defueling is important, but we don't stop paying attention to this important issue. We need to stay on top of it. Uh, to ensure that they are held responsible to clean up the mess they've created. Uh, so I appreciate the neighborhood board and our community. It is a community voice that rose up after 2021 that really made a difference because Ernie Lau by myself and with Ern Kawata, my deputy manager, and speaking up on this issue for since 2014 and the Sierra Club, we were like the lone voices in the wilderness. It didn't move the mountain. Um, but when the community rose up yeah, and took action and spoke up on this issue, our leadership, our elected officials listened and everybody came together with one voice. So it's important to continue to keep the one voice on this issue, which is they need to malama the in Aina here. They need to care for our, our vai and treat it as a gift from uh, Keakua. It is for our the people that live on this island today and for generations to come. So I'm available for any questions uh, from the board. Yes, sir. Yep. Oh, I'm so, sorry, Chair. Hold on, hold, hold on, hold on. I'm running this meeting, please. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Chair. All right, so anyone from our lobby, if anyone from our lobby has any questions for uh, Mr. Law, I will go ahead and take it at this time. Yes, Pop. From, from the lobby. Please come up to the uh, microphone and state your name, please. Thank you. I'm Tom Thomas Graham. We met about two years ago at Democratic Party headquarters oh, gotcha. at an environmental caucus thing. Yeah, yeah, I wanted to ask you, thank you, first of all, for everything you've done. You're I right? told you then you could run for governor and be elected in a landslide, but you have no interest in that. Sir, may I have your name, please? Oh, Thomas Brandt, Tom Brandt, downtown. 37 year resident of downtown. Thank you. Um, and I was on this board like 37 years ago for a while. So when I was five, I guess. I don't know. But anyway, um, to the extent you can speak freely in public on the record like this, 
what is your current opinion of the level of importance as well as the effectiveness of the help you're getting from our congressional delegation as well as the the legislative uh, leg legislative leadership state because actually the committee chairs don't do anything unless the legislative leadership so to the expect, extent you can speak frankly please do thank you uh, thank you and, and nice to see you again after many years I'll just be very frank. Back in 2014, it felt like I said earlier, it was just Board of Water Supply and the whole ACR Club, Marty Townsend and Mr. Cavalio, our Chair Cavalio, and a few others. Uh, but over time, uh, it's really completely moved in the opposite direction. Uh, back in May of this year, at the State Capitol in the Rotunda, there was a signing ceremony of a you know, what they call a unified statement on Red Hill. And I was just very proud to stand there, very humbled, because you had the governor of our state of Hawaii, Governor Green, you had the mayor, Rick Blangiardi, you had the speaker of the House of, in, the, in the legislature there, and the president of the Senate, the chair of the Department of Land and Natural Resources, and the director of health, signing on to that unified statement. I'll tell you why that's important, because the very next day I had a meeting with two assistant secretaries of defense a virtual meeting with them on getting some information on PFAS from the DOD. The first thing they asked me is, what about this unified statement, which just got signed the day before? And the very next day, these two people in, in the Pentagon were asking me a question about that. So I think it's important to show unity. We don't have to be in 100% alignment on this issue, but generally, if we can stay together with one voice in unity, we can move mountains as a community. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else in our lobby? All right. See you now. We'll go ahead and move online. Dylan, do we have anyone online? No. All right. See no one online at this time with a quick reference. So just so. If anyone wants to know, these tanks are huge. You can fit a lower tower into each one, a lower tower into each tank. So that's 20 lower towers. Also, if you take a lower tower and you put a lower tower right above the state capitol building, and you look straight down to the bottom of the state capitol building where it's at, that will be the aquifer. So that's how close it is. And this leak is a damage not just to the Red Hill area. It's a damage to all of Oahu because everyone will drink that water, including tourists at some point. And Ernie Lau speaks right back in 2014 with Marty Townsend, who I give much um, props to. We worked on um, radio for a long time, and Ernie Lau, and it was hard because we didn't have the leaders backing us. But then now it finally snowballed. But the bottom line is these tanks must be decommissioned. They must be emptied cleaned out and removed, or not as Mr. Lau just said, there's gonna be a reason why they can put it back in, and we don't want that. All right, so I'll go ahead and take um, questions from our board. We'll start with uh, Mr. Bob Armstrong, Board Member Armstrong. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes. Um, um, Mr. Lau, thank you for your presentation. There's obviously a whole lot of work still to be done, but I, I need to say you are a, a real life hero. And um, I know that you don't want to wear that title, but you are. And I thank you for everything you've done. It's very meaningful. Um, because our neighborhood is um, ended at River Street, at the western boundary of it, um, and then Kalihi starts from that point forward at Ala Park and beyond, how close is the water usage to this neighborhood? Uh, I think we're still... So th this is interesting because Halava Valley is quite a number of miles to the west. If I understand your question, maybe seven, six or eight miles to the west uh, before you get to Halava Valley over Red Hill. So for the Board of Water Supply System, and sir, if I get your question wrong, please ask it again. But uh, as Honolulu first started as a city, uh, back when the Board of Water Supply 
was created back in 1929. So we've been in existence as a semi-autonomous agency of the city government with the sole focus on uh, providing safe drinking water to our community. Back in 1929, the wells in Honolulu could keep up with the demand. But as Honolulu has grown, what's happening, and East Honolulu has grown too, uh, that we've actually had to go out to Pearl Harbor to develop wells out in Pearl Harbor and pump from the west going eastward all the way out to Hawaii Kai. So Halava Shaft, which is one of our largest serving the Honolulu water system, that was actually built around 1945 or so, uh, shortly after these tanks were completed. And that was actually to bring water into Honolulu because at that time, World War, World War II was happening and there were so many soldiers coming to Oahu, we couldn't keep up with the water demand. So we built a water source and that began the, the trek uh, toward the journey toward developing more wells to the west. And that's why it's important for Honolulu also with what happens at Red Hill, even though you, you're not close to the actual Red Hill fuel tanks. I hope I answered your question. You're welcome. Okay, thank you, Bob. All right, um, Member Shulan Super Kwok. Thank you, Anila, for coming. And you've been tireless in educating us. Uh, I'm curious to know that um, the Navy wasn't cooperative. They were not cooperative for a long time. And so they, they actually fired the old guy. And then you had a new Navy officer trying to work with you guys. How is he personality-wise working with the local issue? And is there money behind what he's trying to do? Uh, thank you for that question. Uh, so you're absolutely right. I think I've dealt with at least eight different admirals in charge of Pearl Harbor over the last nine and a half years. Right now, there are three admirals that have been assigned uh, uh, to handle different aspects of, of the issue. One Admiral, Vice Admiral John Wade is in charge of the, they've created this joint task force, which is solely focused on defueling the facility. Uh, another Admiral, and that's ja Vice Admiral John Wade. Another Admiral in charge of Navy Region Hawaii, uh, Rear Admiral Stephen Barnett. Uh, and then to support them, you have the head uh, Admiral in charge of NAVFAC Pacific, Naval Facilities Command Pacific. Uh, Rear Admiral Jeff Killian. So what's happened, um, uh, Member Kwok, is decided to actually last year that we need to reach out to engage directly with the Navy, the leadership at the Navy to talk about this issue and see how we can encourage them. Up to that point, we were like fighting, you know, pounding the wall, the door, trying to knock it down. But uh, so we reached out, we've had, we now have regular face-to-face -face meetings with the three admirals in charge of the Red Hill situation. And I think that's helped. I think they understand for the first time, they appreciate the importance of water to our culture, for, the, for our Kanaka Maoli and for our community, how important water is, especially when you live on an island. And I am very hopeful that uh, they will accomplish this, their mission. We've also started to engage directly with leadership within the Navy and the Department of Defense. Uh, so I've kind of gone, instead of just working through our regulators who have direct legal responsibility over the Red Hill situation, now trying to uh, open the lines of communication to uh, military leadership. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next board member, Travis Thompson, please. Thank you, Chair, and uh, thank you for the report. Uh, I feel like we've heard a lot about the fuel, but I was curious about the PFAS chemicals and kind of what the strategy for dealing with those is since it, you know, the properties are very different and kind of what's the plan to remove those chemicals and is the military gonna do that or is that gonna be left to Hawaii? Uh, that's a that's an ongoing, uh, uh, board member Myers, that's an ongoing discussion I'm having with the Navy and the regulators because I, I want them to also realize that PFAS is also related to this uh, facility and that uh, 
their issues don't end with just emptying the fuel tanks out. PFAS generally, which has been widely used, uh, developed a man-made chemicals developed back in the 1940s and widely used even, even in my home, non-stick pans, stain-resistant clothing or carpeting. Um, it's been around, so uh, up to this point, we are do, have been doing testing for PFAS at our various Board of Water Supply wells. We've identified eight wells that have confirmed low-level detections of PFAS chemicals. So we are looking at it very closely, and the EPA is probably less than a year away from passing drinking water regulations for six of the PFAS chemicals uh, that we would be required to comply with. Uh, so in preparation for that, we are gearing up to obtain the engineering expertise to look at the detections, the trends, and to see if treatment is, uh, is a uh, recommendation and if it's even feasible at different locations. Uh, so we want to prepare for that. All right, thank you very much. Next, we'll move on to Board Member McDonald, please. Thank you, and uh, thank you very much for being here. Uh, I enjoyed your presentation. I I heard a lot about the uh, ensuring that these storage, these fuel facilities will be shut down and shut down permanently. Uh, I want to start my question by saying that absolute, the, absolutely the number one priority should be that Hawaii has clean and healthy drinking water, and that should come before any other issue. However, we do have a strong military presence here in Hawaii, and those military resources, which especially considering all the struggle and strife that's currently happening in the world with uh, you know, many conflicts around the globe and Hawaii being a very important strategic location, uh, we can't expect the military to not use fuel. And so as much as I heard about shutting down these fuel storage facilities and making sure they never get used again, which I'm not opposed to, what are the proposals for the military's fuel store, for proper military storage of the military fuel? Because they are gonna need fuel. So if we're not gonna allow them to upgrade these facilities and make them acceptable to our needs, which again should be the first priority, clean, healthy drinking water. But if we're not gonna allow them to use these facilities, then where are, what is the plan for the military to store the fuel that they need for their, uh, for their purposes? Uh, so that's, uh, so what the military realizes that uh, continuing continue to use Red Hill doesn't really make sense for them. It's a very, it's an 80 year old facility that's difficult, if not impossible to maintain and difficult to operate in. And the, the leaks and, and mishaps that have occurred, they've always pointed toward human error or about the different systems or the, the work happening in Red Hill. So they've realized that they are looking for alternative locations for fuel storage. And right now they've initiated a environmental assessment process at the federal level for where does the fuel go once it reaches uh, the Pearl Harbor and where does it go to different destinations? And the, in their EA, they've identified other alternative locations, including uh, fuel storage and above ground fuel storage tanks uh, on Oahu to, on the uh, Campbell Industrial Park area. Uh, so they're, they're doing that. They realize that uh, Red Hill persisting to store fuel at Red Hill doesn't really make sense and it is not protective of our water, water resources and they have alternatives. All right, thank you very much. Ross, is there something you would like to say? Please, Board Member Ross. Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. Um, Mr. Lau, thank you so much to, for everything you and your team have been doing to protect us. Uh, I read an article a few months back talking about, um, I think you were mentioning, you were giving a statement that the Navy was somehow not giving you and your team all the access you possibly needed. Uh, I know you have your own testing wells, the Board of Water Supply testing wells, but I think they weren't giving you access to the Navy's testing wells to take samples. They weren't giving you access to the underlying data of their reports that you could use in a readable format. I was just curious, has that situation improved? And if not, is there anything we can do to help? 
Uh, you're absolutely right. You know, tra transparency from the very beginning back in 2014, transparency of information and experiences of this facility, including all of the past leak history, has been really problematic. Uh, it's been very difficult to get that information out of the military. I must say on the issue of access to get testing of their wells, I would say the door is kind of open and I've got my foot in the door, uh, but it's I'm not completely through that door yet. Uh, but they are open. We've allowed them to test board of water supply wells if they wanted to, with no limitations. They recently have said they we can test like from Red Hill shaft uh, at three different locations. Uh, but we have to only test what the regulators require them to test for, which is uh, not really applicable to the Board of Water Supply. We want to do environmental testing to find out what else might be out there and use our laboratory methods. But that discussion is ongoing, and I'm having that discussion at a assistant secretary of the Navy level. Um, so I'm, I'm hopeful. I, I'd like to point out that and I actually installed it on my phone. Uh, JTF dash um, uh, Red Hill on your iPhone or your Android phone is an app. And I must say, I, I had just installed it recently. I finally figured out how to do that. And in terms of the defueling information, it has almost everything I'm aware of there on available on your smartphone. So that's something to maybe look at, I'm not trying to plug it, but that's a step forward in transparency, but it's only a step. They, they need to take more steps. All thank right, you. thank you. Could you please repeat that site? Uh, hold on. It's JTF-Red Hill. If you go to the Apple Store, search for that, and you'll look for one, and it comes up with this purple star looking icon and that's the uh the app you can install on your iphone and it'll give you uh, uh some of the latest information including the information about the environmental assessment or nepa nepa uh posters that talk about where the fuel uh options might go for the fuel i think the other thing that the navy may have realized and we, which is something we saw many years ago to have 200 million gallons of fuel stored in a World War II facility, it made sense in World War II when underground you could protect it from the bombs. Uh, but in today's, with today's weaponry, uh, that doesn't mean that that fuel facility underground is gonna be safe. Uh, and putting all that fuel in one location, I, and it's like putting all your eggs in one basket. So diversifying it and putting it in different places uh, I think they, that's probably where they're headed. So they have options for fuel storage uh, on Oahu too. All right, thank you, appreciate that. Board member Lori McCartney, is there anything else you would like to add? Board member Lori, no? All right, thank you. And let me see, Sean, you haven't spoken, yeah? No? All right, um, is there anything else anyone would like to say on this subject? All right, if not, I want to thank you. But before I thank uh, Ms. Law, I'd like to say one more thing. Through our research with Marty and everyone at Sierra Club, we also found out that these tanks, and you got to think about it, these tanks had um, eroded so much that they're about the size, the width of a dime. And their, their width is about that size of a dime. So you think about it, all that oil right there, and they have the width of a dime before they get out. So it's dangerous. It has to be... Um, done with completely yeah so we advocated for the total dismantle all of that um with marty with sierra club and that's what we've done and it was great working with all of you guys but since 2014 thank you very much i'll give you one last question mr brown go ahead yes please i don't want to sound too doom and gloom but i would like to know even if it's low probability how bad would a worst case scenario be? I mean, I think we spoke earlier, you're drilling new wells or trying to find new wells, right? But we spoke about desalinating seawater as well. In a worst case scenario, we'd have no choice but to desalinate, right? At whatever the cost would be, at least temporarily, correct? I, I think, uh, 
I've worked on desalination probably since the 19, 1990, uh, when I was a young, younger engineer at the Board of Water Supply and uh, uh, looking at what's happening uh, because of the Red Hill crisis, but also be with cl global climate change, that we need to diversify our resources. Right now, we're 100% dependent on these underground aquifers for our source of our water. But really, where does that water come from? It comes from the Ua of the rain falling on the Ko'olaus of the Waianae Mountains, seeping down through the volcanic rock to recharge these, these underground aquifers. So if rainfall changes in the future, our supply is going to diminish. So we need to look at things like uh, use of recycled wastewater for irrigation where it's appropriate, uh, desalination, and of course, all of you are water protectors when you conserve our precious by. When you take shorter showers, you don't leave the hose running uh, in your yard, uh, when you wash your car, when you look at ways uh, to conserve water, that leaves the resource in the aquifer. Uh, and that resource can, the aquifer has huge capacity. So the more we can leave in the aquifer, we can store for our future uh, when we really do need it during a long drought. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. We appreciate you giving us your time. And once again, I really appreciate what you've done and what we, um, the work you've done since 2014 with the Sierra Club and everyone else. You are a hero. Yeah. You are a hero. All chairs. So well, thank you. It's a team effort on the Board of Water Center. And thank, thank you, you, Kathleen, for your help also. Thank you. All right, next, we'll be moving on to, let me see, public concerns. Public concerns, we have two minutes. Go ahead, young lady. Good evening, everyone. I'm Ann Hansen, and I'm from the Cathedral of St. Andrew, along with my partners, Barbara Service and Elizabeth Conklin, who are part of the Social Justice Committee. Greetings also from Provost Heather Patton Graham. She is on the mainland at this time uh, working on her doctorate, but she wrote this address. We're pleased to be here. As a neighborhood partner, our deepest question is, how are we called to be a blessing? How can we partner, assist, help, and work together to take care of one another and respect the dignity of all who are in the downtown com community? We're thinking about the Kapuna who live in downtown, and we will move into a new high-rise right across the street from the cathedral. We're concerned about our siblings who are struggling with houselessness and those who are struggling with mental illness, looking for resources and help. We are aware of the empty storefronts, but we're excited to see HPU breathe life into new spaces in downtown area. Our property, particularly our fountain, has been a hot spot for activity, most intensely post COVID. The fountain has been a laundry facility, a laboratory, and a bathtub, so often that the fountain filter can no longer work. We have needed to drain the fountain to address the functional issue and scrub it clean. The newly opened resources along Queens, along with the empty fountain, are fantastic. Our maintenance staff has not had to clean up as much rubbish left behind debris and particularly not nearly as much human waste. Most importantly, we know this means dignity has been restored for some of our siblings. That is good news. So how can we help sustain and maybe even work together to add more resources in the neighborhood, more goodness? We want to help. All right, thank you very much. Aloha, Chair. Aloha. I'm Robert Armstrong, and this is the first time I've ever addressed the community, but I want to make them aware of a uh, big meeting that's coming up on August 19th at 1 o'clock at 1152 Smith Street. That is the old Channel 14 
uh, television studios. It's now New Life Center. And for those who are worried about parking, there's a city garage right behind it off of Baratania. Um, as many of us know, the neighborhood board system hasn't really been addressed or looked at for about 15 years. And I and a lot of other people believe that it's time that we get to work on this very, very long process of bringing up the neighborhood plan to, to date, make it, making it the most relevant that it can be, taking a look at the neighborhood commission office and the commissioners and how they're selected and, and um, making this as truly the most grassroots and democratic system uh, that we have, I think, in the country. Um, I'm a great admirer of the neighborhood board system, this being the second board that I've been on. And, um, and it's a privilege to serve here and to respond to the community. But we also have to have a good backbone to what we do. And so that meeting again is August 19th at one o'clock at 1152 Smith Street. And everyone is invited on this island. So I hope to see you there. And thank you, Mr. Chair, for the opportunity to share this. All right, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Next we have Jack James. Good evening, Chair, and thank you for allowing me to speak and to neighborhood board uh, members. My name is Jack James, and I'm heading an organization called Honolulu 7 Recall, and we're going to be working in your neighborhood and on the streets of Chinatown, and we wanted to let you, in fact, we're already there, but we're wanting to make sure you know why we're there. We want to be a good neighbor, and we want to be a responsible party acting in your neighborhood. We're, we are created to recall from office seven Honolulu City Council members who recently took what we think is an egregious um, pay raise. And so we will be um, following the Honolulu City Charter with respect to recall. I wanted to introduce myself. I'll put my name and contact information in the chat. Uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you for letting me speak and I'm available for any questions and answers. Hi, thank you, Mr. James. Appreciate it. Next, we have Mr. Lai. Chair, thank you for the chance to speak during this period. I just want to draw attention to the public to several items that are within the downtown Chinatown neighborhood board public facing Google Drive folder for this month. It includes a number of items that are labeled as item number V or five that corresponds to this item on our meeting agenda. Uh, but there are several things to draw your attention to. Number one is an upcoming Chinatown Town Hall that relates to the upcoming Honolulu Triennial that's coming for 2025. Uh, one of the things that we've spoken about with this program to date is to try to find ways to eliminate, possibly entirely, the unused and empty storefronts at street level throughout downtown and Chinatown. We have about 18 months to begin to plan this, but there is a meeting coming up on Friday, 14 July. Uh, there is a, a button to press on the page that's in the uh, in the folder. I encourage everyone to go and check that out. Other items that you'll see there are uh, information about uh, a new public house at Aloha Tower and the Liquor Commission meeting about that coming up. I believe it's at the end of this month. And I also found a document that presents an eight-figure developer fee that will be awarded to the purchaser of Mauna Kea Tower. And we discussed this process back during our May 2023 meeting. But what this told me was that we need to be a little more stringent, I believe, in investigating these projects and uh, doing a bit of, of due diligence, although I think it will be of benefit to the community. Uh, there was a, a revelation uh, over the weekend about the NCO possibly intending to spend funds for polo shirts for all 400 neighbor board members. I'm not sure if I'm too keen on that, but uh, that event itself brings me to, out of abundance of caution, publicly disclosed per neighbor plan, 90, rather uh, HRS 92-2.5E, uh, my attendance at a meeting with two or more members of this board on 1 July of this year. Topics discussed included technical aspects of election of officers and the procurement of business cards for interested board members. And I'll echo something that uh, Member Armstrong had mentioned as well. Uh, the Pearl City Board has also um, approved a resolution during its meeting in the past week that addresses some of the similar concerns. So it is interesting to see this. It's interesting to see this synergy that's coming about 
uh, with concerns. And again, I encourage everyone to visit the public facing neighborhood board Google Drive folder. Information is in the agenda as well. Thank you, Chair. All right. Thank you. Is there anyone else that has any public concerns? Public concerns, go ahead. Um, board member, um, Chair. Uh, no, actually, Schubert. Well, thank you. I'll, I'll just do it from here. I just want to thank the NCO for organizing a very island wide um, swearing in of all the newly elected officers last Saturday. And it was uh, held at the Phil M uh, Center in Waipahu. And actually moving uh, folks from East Honolulu to West Honolulu to to meet and greet some of our fellow um, neighborhood members, and this is a, a, this was a huge crowd, and uh, we are really happy that it happened in in that way, and more people came forward to join the uh, swearing in and uh, to listen to a history of how the neighborhood board was founded and why it's important. And I, I do believe that we need to update our neighborhood plan and so we can work together with the other neighborhood board uh, leaders. So I just want to congratulate the, the hard work of the NCO uh, last Saturday. Thank you. All right, thank you. Is there anyone that has any public concerns for the downtown Chinatown area? Hearing none, seeing none, we'll go ahead and move on to item six, board business. A meeting date, time, location, and format. Do we have any discussions on this? Go ahead, board member Bob Armstrong. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, at the risk of uh, uh, drawing out a long conversation here, um, I think there's a couple of truths that we all have recognized. First of all, this location is uh, convenient for our community, so I hope that doesn't change. And our starting time is wonderful, six o'clock, and especially since we tend to go on. But I do wanna ask the board to consider an alternative day for the first week of the month. Um, what I have found is that in our community, uh, Thursday on the first week of the month is often consumed with other events, uh, particularly uh, as the weekend gets closer and um, and so it may not be the best day as well as there are so many other neighborhood boards meeting tonight. Um, so I would like to suggest that we move to ideally Monday of the first week of the month. Um, we would be all alone, the only neighborhood to beat on that Monday. I've checked with the NCO as well as um, someone, I believe it was Dylan who checked with the school. Um, it is a, uh, they can work with us. And so um, there isn't anything that's problematic in that regard. One other thing, um, if the other board members are like me, Monday is not the greatest day in the world in terms of recreation or uh, relaxation. It's a work day and probably the most intense work day of the week. And so since the neighborhood board requires so much attention from us and so much uh, time and effort, um, let's get it finished on the first day of the week or no later than the second day of the week so that we have, if any matters come up and we need to clean it up, we have Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday in which to work and get some answers for the community. Um, as it is, when something occurs on a Thursday night, it's rare that we can get to it until the next week. And by then, a lot of time and mojo has been lost. So I'd like to suggest we meet the first Monday at this location, six o'clock of the month. Thank you. All right, does anyone else have any suggestions on the date? All right, that's fair none. All right, okay, go ahead. Um, Board Member McCartney. I do agree that we should try to clear ourselves from other neighborhood board meetings if we can, uh, so that we can get good representation from our elected officials. I think the time and the place are great. There could be a, a change to the date that could make it more possible for people to attend. As somebody who is a marketing person, I know Thursday is the best night to get people. Yeah. Uh, and Monday is not a great night. I would propose perhaps Tuesday as a compromise type of um, date that that could work. The other thing with Monday is that we have holidays that fall on, on the next year, maybe there's one, but in future years, there could be more. 
And so I would suggest Tuesday being more clear of um, that kind of conflict so we don't have to mess with that. So, all right, Ross, board member Ross. No. Well, yeah. well, right. Okay. All right. Does anyone else have any questions? We're going to go with uh, McDonald first because he had his hand up first. Yeah. Uh, I have a, um, I agree. I think Monday, uh, uh, this is unique to me, but it, I run a nightclub and bar, and Thursday is a very busy night, date night for me. So uh, Monday would be definitely better for me. I would also like to add that uh, while I'm grateful for this facility and the generosity of this school to allow us to meet here, I should remind the board and also if there are any of our elected officials, particularly city officials, that we're in the capital district and we have several facilities available to, available to us in our district that are made for just this sort of thing, including Honolulu Halle, the theater that we were in that's near the library and the library. And I think that there are, again, I'm grateful to this facility and I, and it suits our needs, but I do think that there are better facilities that we can be taking advantage of. We're in the capital district and our our city council, mayor, and governor should be allowing us to use those facilities which are better suited to this purpose. All right, thank you. Thank you. Next, we have board member Shulan Shubakwa. Thank you, Chair. I really like to keep us on the first Thursday because it, a lot of people know of our time and where we meet so that, um, you know, elected officials and also uh, the community are aware that and B13 always meets on Thursday. So I am very comfortable with keeping the date and the time uh, for Thursday. And I also am cognizant that uh, we have uh, a, a, a shortage of uh, NCO assistant assigned to, um, to boards. So I'd rather to be assured that we have an NCO assistant for for Thursday, rather than changing dates and risk not having someone, All right. plus or lay low people. So. All right, thank you. We have board member Lai, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, if I may just augment in a friendly fashion the motion that I believe is on the table that we should plan to vote as follows to meet on the first Monday of each month during the rest of this term at 6 p.m. in this middle school cafeteria with the same audiovisual contractor if we if there's any way to find it if that's a okay thing at this point there's no roadblocks to that uh, that's how i would phrase the motion okay right but we're not finished with this discussion there's all this john did you want to say anything on um, and considering all the um proposals I, I i tend to side with uh miss mccarney with respect to her suggestions on tuesdays um avoiding any future holidays would be ideal <laughs> and um i think mondays are also because they are so busy for you know for me it is the busiest day of the week too um being adequately you know and then after going through that full work day and then coming here afterward makes the monday um uh, very very long so uh, i support the tuesday suggestion over the monday one all right. No. Before we go back this way, we're going to, we're going to bring everything back in order. But personally, um, we've been doing Thursdays for so long, and it has worked. Mondays, as you said, Mondays, as a lot of people pointed out, is a chaotic day, especially with work, and especially people that work with other people. That by the time they get home, their brains are fried mentally. I hear a lot of people in construction business says. I much rather work construction, the hard work that you're doing, than the mental work of dealing with people every single day the way I do. Um, so let me finish, so, because I've heard everybody so much. So Mondays for me would be out of the questions, not just because of that, but Mondays for me is fluid for me because I have other meetings that I have on those days because I based all my meetings on this Thursday meeting for the last several years. Because I base it, and a lot of people have done that. Um, the, um, someone brought up the fact that, well, it'd be easier 
for those that want to um, announce things, they can announce it on the first Monday. We wouldn't miss any announcements again, but that's not true, especially with this board, because we advise anyone with events or anything to come to us two months ahead of time. I am willing for a Tuesday. Tuesday, I could see doing, but Monday's too many barriers for me. Um, holidays that do come up, because usually my birthday, um, there's a lot of holidays that come up on the first Mondays. But the first Mondays for me, I doesn't think for me personally, would not work. Tuesday would personally work, yeah? We're gonna bring this, um, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I, I was gonna say, in order to abbreviate this discussion, I'll relent to Tuesdays if, if uh, that's agreeable, because we really do need to move from Thursday. We have one person from the public here, and we have 11 or 12 online Thursdays. We need to try something else. Right. And by the way, just for the record, the only holiday on Mondays that conflicts for the next year is New Year's Day, right. and we wouldn't have met anyways. Right. But the Labor Day also. Labor is the, is this not this upcoming year? It's, it's first. Yeah, yeah, it's the first Monday. But anyway, that let's um go ahead and put this into an order right now so we can get through to this. And um, I understand and respect that. No matter if we still say Thursdays, there's only three other board meetings that goes on, and Chinatown is considered part. There's only three other board. There's four board meetings. What I said, if you did hear me correctly, but I said, besides Thursday, there's other three other board meetings that do go on. That's counting this, yeah? So, so there's four. But Chinatown, downtown is considered priority amongst all boards. So, yes, in this sense, so we would always have Olelo and all that. So, but anyway, let's put this into order that we're going to read this out. Go ahead. Oh, um, could I just get a... A motion again and a second for, I believe, the first Tuesday of the month at 6 p.m. at this school. Also with uh, the hybrid format. Is that what we want? Oh, yes. Okay. Can I get a motion? Yeah. Um, if I can amend my original Go amendment ahead. to or or idea to the first Tuesday of each month at 6 o'clock, this location, hybrid, um, I hope that takes care of everything. Okay. Yeah. Do we have a second? Go ahead, Lai. All right, do we have any other discussions on this? Not hearing none, we'll go ahead. Um, that's, Chair, go ahead. Just personally, uh, Monday works great for me. Thursday works okay for me. Tuesday works the least for me, so I'll be voting against Tuesday. I would prefer Monday. Okay, well, that takes care of I was going to say if there's no objections. But, all right, we're going to be doing a roll call at this time, all right? Thank you. If there is no other discussions. Just to clarify, the motion on the table is to uh, have these meetings on the first Tuesday of every month at 6 p.m. at this location, uh, Princess Ruth K.A. Lee Kolani Middle School Cafeteria with the hybrid format, both virtually and in person. Armstrong. Aye. Carvalho. Nay. Fitzsimmons. Uh, abstain. Isokane. Nay. Okay. McDonald. Nay. McCartney. Aye. Lai. Schubert Clark. Nay. Thompson. Nay. All right. The motion does not pass. Three in favor, five of no, one abstention. Thank you. Next, we'll be going to item B determinations of recess schedules. We have up to three. Yeah. We're going to, all right, yeah. All right, so considering that this failed, so we expect that the date would be the same on a Thursday because it failed. So, we'll take yeah. maybe another motion. Uh, sure. Go ahead. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to keep the meetings on Thursday at 6 o'clock. Right. Second. Second. Shulon Superquark, go ahead. Do we have any discussions? Discussion. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, the one thing that uh, did, did occur to me is that you know downtown Chinatown does have a first Fridays event every every month. Thursday, right before the first Friday event, works as a very good advertising tool for whoever's trying to promote anything going on during that first Friday's event, which does draw business to our district. It seems logical to keep the first Thursdays as well. So 
Uh, that's my comment. All right. Any other discussion on this? All right. Hearing none, we'll go to a roll call vote. The motion on the table is to retain the current meeting date, time, place, and format of hybrid. Armstrong. Nay. Carvalho. Aye. Fitzsimmons. Aye. Isokane. Aye. McDonald. Abstain. McCartney. Aye. Lie. Schubert Kwok. Aye. Thompson. Aye. All right, the motion passes. Um, seven in favor, one no, one abstention. All right, next is item B, determination of recess schedule. We have up to three per year that we can take. Right now, we currently take one. That is in January. And one of the reasons we only take one is because we're such a busy board. But if this board wants to take another, this is time to speak up. Yeah. So do we have any discussions on determinations of recess schedule? Do we want to leave it the same? Board member Lai. Thank you, Chair. I didn't know that we had by default agreed to recess in January. We saw the impacts downstream of recessing in January this past year when we got jumbled up in February and that had consequences. I believe that uh, the first uh, or the meeting that would be in January is the second week of January. Is that correct? I, I'm trying to look up a calendar as we speak. So I'm just wondering if we need to by default take January off. January 4th. So I would move that we do not define any recesses now. We can always elect to recess in the future if things change or whatever what comes up, but unless we can justify the need to deprive our community of a chance to hear and be heard during January 2024, I would vote that we uh, not. All right, um, so Mr. Lai, uh, did you want to make a motion on that? And then we'll let you go ahead next. With Thank you, Chair. I'll move that at this time, MB 13 does not elect to assign any months to recess during this term. I'd like to second that. All right. So we got a motion and we got a second. Discussions on this. Any discussions? Go ahead, board member McDonald. I just want to be clear about the motion on the table. It seems as though we're gonna we're gonna vote to not have a recess, which I'm fine with, especially as we can attend these meetings virtually if we need to. So uh, I don't, yeah, I wasn't under, I wasn't sure there was a default reason that we needed to have, take our recess in January, but I'm fine to have a, um, a meeting every month. And if a member can't attend, then that member can attend. And if we decide later to have a recess, we can vote for one. Okay, now that's basically what's on the table right now. <laughs> right, is there anyone else that has discussions on this? Hearing none, seeing none, we'll go ahead and do a roll call vote. There you go. Uh, the motion on the table is to schedule no recesses at this time and can take that up at a later time. Armstrong. Aye. Carvalho. Aye. Fitzsimmons. Aye. Isokane. Aye. McDonald. Aye. McCartney. Aye. Lai. Aye. Schubert Clark. Aye. Thompson. Aye. All right. Unanimous. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Next, we'll move on to. Item C, adoption of our testimony rules. All right. Is there any discussion on this? Basically, is our discussion is what we're going to pay, place a time limit. We have a lot of people talking stories and going five minutes before they ask a question. Yeah? And that, that shouldn't happen. If we can ask a question, our question should take one minute. If you go to um, city council, they have a rule. You want to ask the questions, it's one minute. No need to go into history or anything else. So these are things that will be about our um, testimony rules. Does, is there anything up here for discussion at this time? Go ahead, board member Lai. Chair, thank you. Um, as you know, I shared with you in uh, earlier this month, a template board agenda document, which included some updates to what we see in the uh, top of the agenda document that was shared to the public this past week. Uh, I'd like to move that we limit the period of public speaking to two minutes per speaker. 
uh, and that we also include uh, information to those who are participating by telephone and otherwise of how they can also speak. Uh, as we know, there's ways to press star three to raise a virtual hand if you're by telephone, and we know that people are learning how to use the uh, virtual hand within the WebEx. Uh, but to summarize, if we can maintain our current rules of speaking of two minutes per item unless chair, uh, the chair otherwise grants a longer time. All right. So are you suggesting that if someone is asked a question, they have two minutes to speak on that question? Yes, sir. Okay. So I might, uh, so, okay, that I, I can give, that that I understand, and because that's how we've had it before. That was when, but I would also like to discuss. So when we're asking other presenters or anyone a question, especially as board member, because it will reflect to us board members more so than the public, but board members should go to the questions and ask the questions, and one minute should be sufficient enough to ask a direct question instead of talking about five minutes and then getting to that question five minutes later. Because if you go over um, and watch the videos on YouTube, you can see people are speaking three to four minutes or longer before they ask a question. Let's get directly to the question. Okay. Go ahead. Thank you, Chair. Uh, as you recall, during uh, two previous terms ago, by um, assigning a total duration of time for the question and the answer, that's one way we will to allow speakers and questioners to budget how much time they wanted to tell a story, how much time they wanted to spend asking the question uh, and, and hope to get a response. But I'm open to a limited time. Uh, I'll yield back to the chair. Go ahead, um, board member McDonald. Thank you, chair. Uh, I, I definitely agree with the idea of a time limit for questions. However, I have seen city councils and other uh, bodies such as ours uh, give time, and I think it's very important, especially when we're dealing with our elected pub public officials. We may have specific questions or reasons that we're asking that questions that that we would like the the respondent to tailor their answer to. I think it's important that that the speakers be allowed to ask a detailed and specific or pointed question to an official, and that that official be given a chance to answer. I kind of like the idea Mr. Lai suggests because oftentimes I've asked a question, a specific question, and the person that I've asked the question to danced around the question without answering it, and then I don't get a follow-up question. I think it might be a better idea to have two minutes per question. The person can answer the question, and then you even get a follow-up in case the person avoided answering the question. Okay. So I, uh, I can see where you're coming from. And I respect what you say, but I still believe that this board should be able to direct a question within one minute. If an extra 30 seconds is needed for that, then that will be allowed, just like anything else. Now, those that are that we're asking the questions to, I'm not asking them that they take only two minutes to respond to that question because in my mind, we're gonna have and put a time limit on how long that presentation is going to be anyway from this point on as to facilitate the timing of this because what i'm getting from a lot of people in the a lot of residents is two hours is a long time and when i talk to um academia people in academia and all that this is classes are no more than two hours because people cannot um after two hours people's minds start wandering I can I can go ahead and agree with um board member like but I'm saying so what if we go one to one and a half minutes for the board to ask a question. Go ahead, um my carney. I just wanted to let you know that everything that you just said was one minute. Right. So so, so just to get an idea, uh, one minute is a long time. Right. And that's so, why I wanted to. So I just wanted you guys as you were listening to know that that was a minute. Uh, thank you. I do appreciate it. This is why I wanted to go with one minute. Man. Go ahead, um, McDonald. I think Member McCartney makes a great point. That was a full minute. And we didn't even quite get to say what uh, 
finish your thought. So I would suggest that two minutes per question would be a better uh, suggestion. No, no, that's not what she said. What I said was done within one minute. She, no, she said she made her point is the opposite to what I said. Oh, I'm sorry, my point was. I know you're saying that the opposite, you think one minute is more than enough. And I think you made the point that one minute is not enough. No, no, I think I made the point that one minute is enough. Go ahead, Mr. Rulai. Thank you, Chair. I think this uh, discussion, however invigorating, is moot unless we have a way to monitor and uh, and track this. And that's why, again, I believe that uh, a vice president of operations or something like that who could run a clock that can make sure we could actually take care of this. And that would, in turn, ensure our meetings run on time. I yield. All right. So it still falls upon the chair to monitor that. That's why I do have my trusty um, phone here. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, I'd like to make a motion that we amend our rules to afford board members one minute per question to be administered or uh, right. by the chair. By the chair. All right. Thank you. We got a second. We got a got a motion and we got a second. Any discussion? Second, Shalom. Go ahead, board member Lai. Thank you, Chair. Uh, if I may address the maker of the motion, does this time limit also occur as will be documented on our meeting agenda top box to guest speakers? And members of the public as well. Let me see on the top box. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh uh, to respond to that, I would say speakers. Um, but, but public the the, the yeah. public should That's be able to speak um, longer than that because they're addressing. I'm saying the questions that we ask. Here, Here. The point, they, they may take a little, little bit longer. longer but we, but should we should be. be direct direct Check the, uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. yes. Go ahead, Go ahead, board, board member. member. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you again, Chair. I understand, I understand we're addressing, addressing uh, agenda uh, items, the items, subsection, subsection echo, echo. Oh, echo. Oh, 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 something's wrong. Something's wrong. Somebody has a right to I don't think it's me. Hello, hello, hello. Okay. Is it working right now? It's working right now. Go ahead. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Thank you. I understand we're addressing agenda item six, six subsection C, C adoption, adoption of oral testimony rules. Now, are we, we only addressing the oral testimony, testimony where board members, members are asking questions? questions? Because, because I also, I also have issues, issues with, with um, members, members of, of the board speaking, speaking out of turn, turn just in general. general. I, think I think we need to make sure that the rules are clear that if a member of whether of the public or the board is to speak, they have to be verbally recognized by the chair, and then that member acknowledged being recognized by the chair before speaking. So every speaker should be recognized by the chair before speaking verbally, and then recognize the, the thank the chair or recognize that they've been called on. Agreed. That should be included in this motion, yes? Then we need some money to make an amendment. Sure. Uh, I'd like to propose an amendment then to the motion so that each speaker, when before speaking, be recognized by the chair verbally. So in case nobody, in case it's not seen, it's verbally so it could be heard by all. And, uh, and then the speaker then acknowledge or thank the chair for being recognized. All right, there, um, do we have a second? I'll go ahead and second. Point of clarification. Go ahead. If I understand what I just heard, um, Mr. McDonald, you wanted that to be universal, correct? Is, uh, if I may? Yeah, but, but, but yes. the amendment or the, the resolution in front of us is only to limit the board to one minute of talking um which i'm going to vote down so how can we have a half of a, a rezo that affects us but then the other half affect everybody does well, that make any sanity if i go ahead, go ahead, board, board member mcdonald thank you as i think it was directed to me i i also disagree that limiting board members to one minute is not uh it's a little bit tight but you know it, it, if we're going to vote for it, we're going to vote for it but to me, even more importantly, is the uh, order and decorum and being recognized to speak. And so whenever we speak, we need to, whenever anybody speaks, whether it's public 
or member of the board, before they speak, they need to be recognized by the chair and then thank the chair for being recognized. And that's the amendment that I'm proposing, whether it's a public person or a member of the board. Okay, so next I have board member Lauren McCarney. I don't really have anything to add after all. Okay, board member Shulan Superquark. I understand this question and this motion, but I also think that the chair to punish a board member for interrupting another board member when the board member has the floor and the time given. All right, so I'm going to answer that question. In the meantime, since we haven't got that far, let's see where we go. Before um, punishing people to me is like punishing my child. But we, if we follow what we're supposed to do, then this should never ever, this should not come up. Yeah, but I understand what you're saying. All right, next, Member Sean. Uh, going back to the minute uh, limit, I, I fully agree with that actually. I, I think it cuts back on uh, uh, campaigning or you know, making narrative statements to elected representatives uh, that detract from uh, what we want to do as a community and instead are advanced for individual purposes. So I'm in support of the one minute limit. All right. Do you understand that? Go ahead. Question. Oh. Uh, is there any more discussions? All right, board member Lai. Thank you, Chair. Can we just omnibus this thing and wrap up the um, speaking limits for members of the public as well into one giant motion? And if so, then I will. It, I'm not sure where we stand with the uh, amendment that was proposed by Member McDonald. Yes. yes. Um, all right, all right. All right. All right. Okay, so the public will get um, upstairs. The two to three minutes that's upstairs to respond to our one minute question. Yeah, I think at this time we're voting on the amendment. Okay. Or we're discussing the amendment. We're discussing the amendment. Uh, to make sure that each person be recognized by the chair and then thank the chair for being recognized. Let, let's go through this amendment first. Is there any more discussions on the amendment? All right, let's do a roll call. So the amendment is <clears throat> for each speaker to be verbally recognized by the chair and then thank the chair for being recognized before speaking. Armstrong. Aye. Carvalho. Aye. Fitzsimmons. Isokane. Aye. McDonald. Aye. McCartney. Aye. Lai. Schubert Kwok. Thompson. Aye. All right, unanimous, thank you. Back to the main motion, which is uh, one minute for board members to speak. Yeah, the one minute is to ask a question. We don't need it more than a minute to ask a question. Obviously, the presenter may go over a minute because they're answering the question. Do you think that we should limit the time for the presenters? Okay. All right. So do we have any further discussions? All right. Roll call vote. Um, I believe Mr. Lai had something to say. Thank you. Sorry. I suppose if I may amend the current motion on the table to limit the time for members of the public to ask questions to two minutes. A second. A second. All right. Do we have any discussions? Go ahead, I'm board member McCarney. Thank you, Chair. Um, I don't know that we've had issues with the public taking a long time to ask questions. Um, as I think about what I was gonna say earlier, we run out of time at the end and we don't get to a lot of our business. Right. Seems a lot of our time is spent by us going on and on and on. Um, so I don't feel the need uh, to put a limit on response time. If, let's say each of us asks one minute questions. Right. So we're taking a lot of time there, and that means that we have somebody who's trying to respond to a whole series of questions. And I don't think we want to limit their response because we want to understand and get our questions answered. Agreed. Mr. McDonald, board member McDonald. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I want to put this delicately as I don't have any uh, qualms with the Chair's competence in administering these rules, but let's Take a scenario, for instance, where somebody is clearly spoken over the minute 
what are the board's options to uh, to point out to the chair that somebody's gone over their time? Well, I'd say I am going to be clocking this, and I will um, let them know that their time is up. This it, your time is up. It's just like when, and you've had this experience, Board Member McDonald. We both have had experience by running the campaigns, and we were speaking, mm -hmm. at, um, and we were told our time is up. You know, it's up, and they close it down. It's done. We will do that. I will advise. Probably like you have thirty seconds left or whatever. <laughs> I think it might be a good idea for to give the board an opportunity to interject by saying point of order when somebody has gone over their time and the the, the chair has not uh, noticed this. Right. So the chair, the chair will notice everything. I will notice. You're going to notice. You're saying you're going to notice everything. Is I that will what you're notice. declaring here. Yeah. I will notice when someone's speaking and if they've gone over a lot, a lot, a lot of time. Yeah. So I'm trying to bring this down is just to give an example with Lieutenant Segusio. He's when we speak to Lieutenant Segusio, Lieutenant Segusio's time goes, he takes about not 50 minutes, he's taking a full 30 minutes because of the questions that have been asked that goes on and then he elaborates and elaborates. So we're working with them to bring that down to the 15 minutes. So five minutes. If I may, yes. in the rare event that somehow you don't notice everything. The board should have an opportunity to say, pardon me, point of order, this person is over their time. Well, actually, you can say point of order any time, right? So, okay. You can so say point of order. We're good there then. Okay. Thank Go you, board member. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I don't think that I wouldn't encourage us to be, you know, monitoring each other for time. And knowing that it's a minute and that you're watching it and in a rare case that somebody goes over a minute, you'll catch it. I, I think that it would not, it would be harmful to the board for us to be sort of monitoring each other right. and how long they're talking. And I agree. Um, by listening to a question that's starting to just go over that minute, you can tell if this question is going to be turned out to a five minute one and said, so yes, I do agree. Any other discussions? This will be the last discussion and then we'll move to a vote. So, um, board member Lai, please. Let me, let me, thank you, Chair. Um, just to clarify, so the amendment that I was proposing was about when members of the gallery or online come and speak and ask their question. Are, are we going to limit that? Because I, I think I proposed two minutes, and I didn't, the discussion didn't seem to touch that at all. So I just want to make sure that was still okay. So what it was is what we we're saying is that certain board members feel as I do feel that we shouldn't be limiting the public. See, we're here not for ourselves. We're here for the public. So if a public goes over this two minutes they should let let's hear them out because we're here for them not for us we're here not for our enjoyment not for anything about us but for the public and it's our public so if it goes over two minutes for the public i'm not going to tell them to stop i'm going to let them finish their questions travis just raise his hand first time speaker okay first time speaker one last time travis go ahead travis Thank you, Chair. Uh, just wanted to clarify uh, Board Member Lai's position. So, is he referring specifically when, say, the you know police are here giving their statement, and a member of the public wants to ask that question, and then saying that they should have asked their question within two minutes, or is he saying all public comments should be limited to the two minutes? I just wanted to clarify. Thank you, Board Member Lai. Thank you, Chair. Um, member Thompson, the um, the top box of our agenda uh, says that. Speakers are afforded up to two minutes on any agenda item unless otherwise directed by the chair. That's our current uh, adopted procedure. So uh, that's to say that they can, from the time they start speaking, they have two minutes to launch into whatever tirade and perhaps ask a question by the end of it if they want. What we're not addressing is something that we did in the past, which was try to corral the responder to the question to provide a succinct response within a defined time period. But it seems like we're we're moving away from that. Uh, so uh, to address your question, I, I'm hoping that we can just maintain the status quo, permitting guests at our testifier's microphone up to two minutes to say whatever they want. All right, we're ready for um, roll call vote.
the amendment on the table is to provide two minutes to the public to speak at every agenda item when it comes up. Armstrong. Yeah, point of clarification. This is an amendment that we're voting on. Yeah, the motion, the main motion is the one minute for board members, which this we is, are not voting on right this second. No, no, no. Okay. This is just an amendment. Two minutes for the public. That's the only thing we're voting. Gotcha. On. Okay. I understand. Uh, I vote aye. Carvalho. Nay. Fitzsimmons. Issa Connor. Nay. McDonald. Aye. McCartney. Nay. Lie. Aye. Schubert Clark. Um, no, no limit. Thompson. Aye. Right. The motion does Aye. not pass Sorry, four in that. favor. Uh, the rest were no. Sorry, five. Pass. It did not pass. So. Oh, the main motion, just a reminder on the table now, is the one minute for board members to speak. I don't know if there's much more discussion to be had. No more. No. We're going to call um, the vote to order. The motion on the table is one minute for board members. Armstrong. No. Carvalho. Aye. Fitzsimmons. Isokane. Aye. McDonald. Nay. McCartney. Aye. Lie. Schubert Clark. Aye. Thompson. Aye. All right, the motion passes with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in favor. Three nay. Thank you. Sorry, two. All right, thank you. Next, we're going to be moving on to designation of board committees and committee chairs. So, this is something that we really have never had on our board. So, is there any discussions about this? Go ahead, board member Lai. Thank you, Chair. In light of some of the possible future deliberations, I'd like to move that this board establish a social media committee uh, consisting of member McCarney, member Isakani, the chair as an ex officio member, and member Armstrong. All right, so we are going to be reading the resolutions, right? That's going to be coming up. As to, um, I'm hoping that you all actually read these resolutions as to about a Facebook account, yeah? So unfortunately, as we all know, that only one person can have a, that Facebook account because of the way Facebook is. But should we have a committee on this? That's a discussion at this point, as I understand it, correctly? That's correct. This is an advisement of resources from the Neighborhood Commission Office. All right. Any discussions on this? Um, board Member Isakani. Uh, I, I respect the suggestion. I, I, I'm, I'm against it, and I probably wouldn't accept um, <laughs> to see it on that. Well, first, we need a second on this. Is anybody going to second? I'll second. I'll okay, second. So we got a second down here, board member uh, McDonald. Second, go ahead. Um, you said you're against it, right? And then we into McCarney. Um, I would be against it. Not that I don't believe that we should have a social media presence, but right. I think having a committee to do a social media presence is just a right. bit too much bureaucracy. Right. Uh, if we outline just sort of basically what the tenants are and. Um, that should it should be enough you know yeah. i know we we describe the difference between a group and a page yeah. and a group takes much less administration and oversight than a page does and um and i've done both i've done both and i know that a group is one that if it's an open group and a public group everybody can post in it the community right. and everybody else if it's a page then you're talking about who's in it somebody's administering nobody's name shows up right from the board it's just a posting of the neighborhood board so if we have if our intention is that we want to share agendas and those kinds of things i would use a page if our thought is that we want to get interaction with people in the community then we'd use a group and we would encourage and invite people in the community to join that group Agreed. and then then we can self-monitor uh, for um, some of the things that we don't want to happen, we don't want the um, 
a disruption. We don't want bad behavior. We don't want advertising. I mean, there's a lot of things that we can watch out for. But anyway, that's that's just my thought and my experience. All right. No, thank you. Very well thought out. Okay, next we have board member Lai, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, I think Member McCartney speaks to exactly to the reason that we did find uh, when doing some research, these recommendations. Um, you know, we are about to get into a very deep and in-depth discussion about the nuances of what this board wants and intends to do, how it will be managed, options, uh, scenarios that we'll need to discuss. And the question is, do we want to do that all right here tonight in succession for two consecutive resolutions, which uh, you know, after working on them with member Isakani, um, I think they are well developed. Uh, it's just a matter of if we believe that as a board we'll be able to sort everything out tonight, or do we want to consider having a subset of our members go and study this in depth and come back and let us know what they have thought about and contemplated as reasons for advocating one way or another, or the reasons for advocating uh, rules, process, and priorities, of which there is a solid outline that's already made. But again, we're those. Resolutions that are coming up are very dense and very detailed, and it could entail a long discussion tonight. That's why I'm encouraged that we do at least form a committee. The committee can last for as long as it needs to exist at the, at the will of the board up until the end of the term. It might not take that long before we sort things out and get things rolling, but I think that we should give it some consideration. Thank you. All right. Um, thank you. Is there any other discussions on this? All right. Go ahead, board member McCartney. Thank you. Um, the only thing um, that I would say is if we're thinking of a page, then I would have the secretary be the person who manages that because they know what's coming in. Um, things that come into the Google Drive can be posted. Um, the um, agendas can be posted. The minutes can be put. I mean, there's different things, or I don't know about the minutes. But anyway, if that's the objective is to get information out and stuff, then that's uh, something that the secretary or the chair or the secretary and chair working in combination could do. All right, uh, we're going to take your question, then I'll finish it up, and we're going to go ahead and move on forward. Go ahead, um, Board Member McDonald. Thank you, Chair. So I guess I just need some clarification. Are we are we voting to approve a social media or a Facebook page for our board? And if so, who's going to run it, and who's going to be allowed to contribute to it? Uh, so we're um, voting to form a committee to um, discuss this out, mm -hmm. yeah? so okay. that, that's what it is. All right. I, so um, I, I have said that uh, Mr. Um, McDonald will be the last before I give my two words and we're gonna move on forward from this. There'll be no more discussions at this point. So I'm gonna put my two cents in on this, yeah. So I have both up a page and a group. The group works fantastic, perfectly. The page I only use to put in the agendas. That's about it. But the group is a much um, the group is a much better way where the where the um, people in our area have been communicating. And so um, I like that idea. In fact, it was um, board um, member Fitzsimmons that suggested that instead of doing a page, do a group. And it does work because everybody can be involved in it. Not just me, but anybody can from the public can be involved in it. Yeah. So that's a, that is a big difference. All right, we're going to go ahead and move on to the um, roll call. Oh, so the motion on the table is the. No, I said that McDonald would be the last, and I give up the last, and that will be it. We're moving on. The Chair, I'm appealing your decision. That, that's all I'm interrupting is to ask. I'm appealing your decision to end discussion on the matter. If anyone. Said, we have to move on. Time. This is what. Right. Everything. Yes, sir. Speak and speak and speak. There comes the point where we have to call the vote. Chair. Call the vote. I parliamentary procedure. I'm just asking for a reconsideration of your decision. If anyone else has any more dis discussion or a question to ask about the actual formation of the committee, not what the committee will do, I just want to make sure. So, uh, Mr. Lai, I had said that McDonald would be last, and I'm going to finish it up with what I have to say. Um, you've given your points and also when you um, decide on this committee that you want to um, create two of the people that you wanted on this committee already said they would not be on this committee so at this point i think it's time to take a vote i'm calling for the vote 
The motion on the table is to establish a social media committee uh, with the following members, McCarney, Isokani, Armstrong, and Chair Carvalho as an ex officio member. Armstrong. No. Carvalho. No. Fitzsimmons. Isokane. No. McDonald. Abstain. McCarney. No. Lie. Schubert Thompson. No. All right. Uh, the motion does not pass one in favor, um, several no, and one abstention. All right, next we're going to allocations of $1,000 for downtown Chinatown community outreach. This is going on almost a year, I think, that we've had this on the board. So we've all had a chance to see what board member Luke McCartney had put up, yeah? So we are going to go and move forward and try to get this passed. Actually, at our last meeting, we said we will come up with a suggestion. So first of all, we will look over at McCartney's suggestions, and then we'll go ahead, and I do believe that there's a few members that would like to add to this, all right? So we'll put this up for discussion. Is there anyone that had a discussion on this? I'm not seeing none. Is there anyone that wants to add to this? Mr. Armstrong? No. With this. Well, I had a written uh, communication that was thwarted by the NCO that proposed uh, a holiday uh, event um either the first thursday or friday of december that was a food drive a toy drive and we maybe make use of a facility here in chinatown downtown like the hawaii theater and have a musical guest as well as a short meeting before that as a way to bring the entire community together but somehow that didn't make it past the editors of um free speech. So I don't know what to make of it. All right. I don't have, as a point of order, I don't really have a problem with Lori's suggestions. I think some of them are very good, but um, without a fulsome discussion, um, I can't vote for anything because I feel that um, board members are being edited by someone or something, and that's not right. Let me do this. So, uh, Mr. Um, before we move forward, so, um, board member Armstrong. So this is what I got from OIP, Mr. Cavallo. As far as the sign sign out goes, the important thing would be to ensure that all board discussions about the fundraisers are held during a meeting at which the issue was on the agenda or is authorized by one of the Sunshine Law's permitted interactions. Depending on whether the board members were attempting to run the entire event themselves or had volunteers or staff and assistants, there could be logistical challenges in planning and running the event in compliance with Sunshine Law. But Sunshine Law doesn't address the questions of whether the board is allowed to fundraise. However, I think your concern about whether the neighborhood board can fundraise and put on a holiday event is more likely to raise potential ethic issues than Sunshine Law issues. And that is what came through to me from OIP. I, I like the idea. Um, oh, but, that's what you told me. Yeah, but, yeah, uh, but you tell me a lot of things and then change. Hey, oh, so, hold on, hold on. Uh, I'm sorry. You're out of order. Next time you go out of order, I'm going to ask you to leave. So I, I, I reached out because I did like the um, idea. So it would have to go through ethics, yeah? So um, I think um, there's something that NCO wants to clarify about what you had said earlier, yeah? Yeah, I just had a question, Mr. Armstrong. Um, I could be wrong about this, but I believe you had sent me an email um, that just told me your idea, but there was no direction about maybe sharing it with the board. And my understanding was that you might have BCC'd the board members, so they would have known already. And it appears that you're upset that I didn't share that with the board. Abs absolutely, yes, okay. uh, because that was the whole intent of sending. Why would I send it to you um, if it wasn't to be communicated with the board? Why would you not the chair? I don't make the rules here. I don't make the decisions. The chair is your guy. Huh. Okay. Um, well, there has to be a a a, a, a center point. Uh, that's not the word I want. An intersection, and you've always been that. But um, I, you know, uh, uh, look, if we want to spend money and pretend 
you know, it's good for the community. That's okay. I came up with uh, an absolute uh, um, plan to bring the entire community together and to do so in a generous way. And you turn it into a fundraising event and all that sort of ethical issues and all that sort of stuff. Um, look, let's take it off the board. I don't want to have anything to do with it. And I don't want, I, I actually think we should give the thousand dollars back to the city because with the exception of a banner or something that promotes when we have meetings, um, this is all way too much discussion about the board and not about the neighborhood. And it makes me incredibly uncomfortable that somebody, you know, while it was a great gesture by the NCO, that somebody is, uh, you know, pushing apart the apple cart again. Go ahead, I'm board member McCarney. Thank you, Chair. So just what, whenever I did develop these ideas, it was based on what are we trying to accomplish? And so I didn't develop these ideas just myself. Um, any, there were a couple that came into me and I put those in. Um, so the idea was just to throw those out there. But the objective, as I understood it, was to raise the profile of the neighborhood board within the community. And I think that the reason for that is that people know that we're people that are representing them so that they can come to us, you know? So, so with that, any of the ideas then were, I just try to outline them in a way that they were simple to see and then um, then went to the neighborhood commission and they said, well, this will work and this won't work. So that's what narrowed that down. So I wanted to thank everybody who contributed ideas. A lot of them were picked up during the meetings, in fact, or came um, later. And um, that's it. Thank no, you. and I, I appreciate everything you did for that. As, my, as for me, I like the idea of getting into the community, doing a cleanup, mixed with the idea of doing sign waving for bicycle and pedestrian safety. I think those two, $1,000 would be able to handle those two so that we could go on and do this um, every quarter. Um, it would be, so the materials would be out of someone's place and all that, and so I think that would be great, yeah? So I thought if we could mix those two, it'd be excellent. Chair. Go ahead, Member um, McCartney, then we'll go ahead and, okay. Go ahead, um, uh, Ms. O. Lloyd. Thank you. Uh, Lloyd Yoninaka, Executive Secretary, Neighborhood Commission. Um, I don't know where to begin. Uh, the intent of the money, the $1,000, was for outreach, for the board to reach out and have a presence in the community, hopefully generate maybe interest and more people will come. But it was to get the board reaching out into the community uh, for a better presence. Um, if you don't use the money, that's fine. Bob, happy to take it back. Uh, we got plenty of things that we can do. But I thought uh, $1,000 would be something the board could um, use. Uh, and I'm not, and I understand your, your project, your idea. I think it's wonderful. I think it's not, the board is not the venue or the vehicle to get that done. But I think you can be part of it. So it's not like, a, the idea is great. Uh, it's just that maybe the board is not the vehicle to do that. And it raises a lot of other issues, but that aside, I, I want the board to understand that the funds are to make your presence a little, little bit bigger in the community. And it's not doing major, major things, but little, little things too, big and small, um, whether it's the cleaning up of the park or the street, or, you know, I was at the Hawaii Theater the other day and I thought, you know, Hawaii Theater is such a iconic place and they have a lot of events there. And I thought, oh, it'd be pretty interesting if you spent a few dollars and actually bought tickets to events and have that given away to the kids at the school to, to attend an actual play or an event there. But the point of it was I just wanted to spur some ideas yeah, and and the whole point of that I spurring that idea is, is to just have a conversation, um, and I and I would like you to have that conversation, but at the same time, it's not to divide you. It's to say, okay, we can do this. And I understand there are things that all of you may participate in, and there are things that maybe just some of you will. 
It doesn't matter. The point is, the, as a board, you are doing something. I think we did the um, the parade in Chinatown. It was a wonderful experience. It was fun. I, I to totally enjoyed it. And and something like that would be would be great. Mr. Chair, may I just address? Yes, go ahead, board member. Um, Lloyd, I, I I'm, I'm, I'm so glad you're crazy about my idea because that's exactly what I proposed: was to go to the Hawaii Theater, have a concert and invite the community for free. Now, you, you to me, say that that's an ethical issue. But when you say it, it's fine. No, I, I, what I said was, the, to do that, the board may not be the right vehicle. But if a nonprofit did that, then the board could work with the nonprofit. The problem that you have as a board to do that is that structurally you don't exist the way an organization does with you know a location, uh, insurance, um, you don't have any coverage, so you, you're, you're fairly limited. You're not a legal entity with a checkbook, and, and that, that is the, really the biggest challenge. Um, otherwise, yeah, do fundraising and go for it. I have no problem. But if there was an entity that was doing something like that, then would you guys be able to participate? Absolutely. I think it would be great. All right. Thank you. I do appreciate it. Board Member Isakane. Uh, th thank you to the neighborhood commissioner, neighborhood commission officer, for your generosity. Uh, Chair, just to move this along, is there a motion that I can make? Yes. Can I make like a motion, for example, uh, let's go with A as in alpha and D as in delta for our two selections? Yeah, what's A and D? Uh, my motion is we should allocate the $1,000 between two events. A as in alpha, we pick it up and D as in Delta, we stand for walking and biking safety. So the, the ones cleanup, the ones that you said, the cleanup and the sign waving for biking. So A and D. That was A and D. Yeah. Is there a second? Okay. I'm um, second by Laurie McConney. Is there any discussions on this? Go ahead, board member. Um, Fitzsimmons. It's an opportunity to suggest other. Um, New other suggestions that were in Ms. McCartney's. Okay, so uh, while well, all of them are great, you know, I, I, even the ones that were suggested by Mr. Isokana just now, uh, I looked at the um, the suggestions, and to me, to increase the mo the visibility of the neighborhood board with um, pertinent stakeholders in the community, the highlight on local businesses suggestion, I think it's E, makes the most sense to me because it not only does it encourage uh local business there's so many businesses in, in chinatown and downtown that you know sell things like you know flower shops you know restaurants all these things that could that have gift certificates that would um be available for uh purchase within that thousand dollars that are allocated to uh the neighborhood board we can highlight those businesses and in so doing we would actually encourage their that particular business's partic participation in our meetings as well as others um which and since these people are stakeholders in downtown and chinatown they have businesses here i think they are um a particularly important segment of um of participants that we need to include in our in our meetings uh whereas like you know bikers and stuff while they are very important um i think they might not be as big stake as big of a stakeholder in the community as like certain brick and mortar business holders that's okay that's um so here's my question to board member Fitzsimmons. We already have one motion on the floor. Did you want to make another motion for your what you support? Uh, sure. I'll make a motion to uh, allocate the thousand dollars pursuant to uh, suggestion E um, by Ms. McCartney. Second. All right. We have a first and a second. Okay. Before we move on any further, question. Uh, so I believe item E also refers to all oh, this is all going to be done on the social media account that the board has not currently approved. Just sure. a thought. Yes. The, my understanding is that we have a group, Facebook group now. There's no committee for the Facebook right. stuff. So it's as is, is going to be, is going to continue going forward, the status quo. And we can use what the neighborhood board Facebook page our group that uh, Mr. Carvalho has established to promote these local businesses at, and drive people to the actual group of our neighborhood board versus pages. Okay, um, board member McCartney. I absolutely like the idea, but I think it might be best for us to do one of the other ones first and get our social media presence up 
higher. Okay. So um, if we can have visibility out in the community and get more awareness for the neighborhood board and get people to our Facebook pay, uh, group, uh, then I think we'd have enough mass in there maybe to make this work better for the small businesses. Okay, so so just, oh, so just to um, correlate, um, the, um, there was an A and um, D, right? Yeah, and Andy. So with the cleanup is so, and Bob did come to clean up, but he left early. So we, the Honolulu Chinatown's Lions Club had a cleanup, both Sun Yat-sen Park and Smith Baratania Park. I had the Lions and Leos at Smith Baratania Park, which we adopted, and the city with the mayor and all his people, and including Mike Formby, they were at Sun Yat-sen Park, which the Lions also had adopted. Bob had left at this time, but I went and got the Lions and told the Lions and Leos to leave the park the way it was, and we'll come back and finish this park. Let's get up to Sun Yat-sen Park. While we were at Sun Yat-sen Park and we were working on a park, we had a lot of interest from bystanders and people in the area, residents, who come up and ask what was going on, what was this about, and we explained. So there was a lot of great attention. People were looking at this and did see this, and they appreciated it. I actually got about, um, I got actually six new people to join my Lions Club because of this, but people that were interested and took my emails down because they wanted to be involved in the cleanups in their cities. A lot of the people, some, some of the people live up on the tower above, some lived out throughout downtown and Chinatown, but it's a great way and it's a great exposure. So, Okay, uh, suggestion. Uh, there's no reason why we can't do both. Um, the we pick it up option to me doesn't seem very uh, costly. Uh, once a quarter, uh, we have what t shirts for all of us and then trash bags, right? And we could, whatever, however, that much costs, right? We could subtract it from the thousand, increase the visibility, and divide whatever the remainder is for the rest of our term and have that be the amount of um, gift certificate that we offer to um, the businesses that we that are in our district. By, by us picking up uh, the trash, we can actually advertise the Facebook group and provide an opportunity for these other businesses to get involved. Okay, in so do you want to amend your... Um... Yeah, perhaps, perhaps. We can yeah, amend okay. the, suge the, the motion on the table to have a hybrid option of A and E uh, pursuant to the, the rules that, that are pursuant to the uh, guidelines that I just suggested. Yeah. Do we have a second? Okay, second. Okay. Lori, do you want to keep yours on? Of A and D. No, I'm good. Do you yeah. want to drop it? I think that's a. a, a I agree. A and E. A and e. I like that network. All right. Do we have any discussions on A and E? Go ahead, Board Member McCoy. The only discussion that I would have is how do we identify the business and um, make sure that that feels like equitable, I guess, okay. and who we select. All right. Uh, Board member Isakane. Uh, my, my quick thought on that would be assign each board member a month. They can go out and find a business, one that they don't have a conflict with, no no direct financial interest in, and just, just discuss with them. We want to do this promotion. Are you willing to participate? And that's how it goes. Board member Lai. Thank you, Chair. As always, I'm worried about the, uh, the financial issues. I'm glad to hear the idea earlier to kind of spend and then divide the rest. But um, again, just wonder if we get clarity on two things. Who is going to be the holder of the funds, who's purchasing and allocating the supplies, where they'll be held. And then secondly, uh, if I may address the executive secretary, because this was mentioned at a re recent meeting of the commission, do we anticipate any sort of a carve out of funds for neighbor board members to opt in to get business cards, which could be readily available to hand out at these events? So business cards will come to us next, probably next month. Okay. That, that's a decision. Well, I just said that. Okay. Uh, okay, so we'll get business cards from them. Yeah, because mine's running out too. Um, as far as where the supplies would be held, um, you can easily held it up in my place. I have no problems because I have storage for it because I also hold other storages from um, the Lions Club and all that when we do events. So, so whatever, but when we're doing the park cleanup, because I'm really used to doing the park cleanup. To do a park cleanup, you have to actually get a hold of the uh, city and county recreation center, and you have to go through a process. Now. Let me please finish. I saw your hand up, but it's my turn. You, then you have to go through a process and sign it, and you have to, you have, they have to give you 
the ticket, which you have to have on you at all times when you're cleaning up the parks or any cleanups, okay? All right, so we'll go ahead to board member Robert Armstrong. Sure seems like an ethics violation for you to keep uh, any supplies in your place. I also um, am concerned that uh, once we start soliciting businesses and working with businesses, leaving some out, that that's also an ethical violation. I would encourage us not to do anything until you do your due diligence and um, check with OIP on all of this. I also want to just say one last thing. I just find it interesting. There's been three neighborhood cleanups in the last uh, two and a half months here, and um, I've been at all three of them. The chair has been at one of them, and the people who really love uh, Idea A, they haven't been to any of them. And I just find that just interesting for the public to know. So actually, I've been at two of them and not three of them. Okay. So the question. You must allow. Uh, so this is me. You, board member Armstrong, it's not for you or any board member on this board to call out any other board member that says speak the board's business and let's speak to people's business. Okay. You tend to go ahead and call people out, which is just wrong. Okay, you cannot do that. Go ahead, board member Isakani, and then we're going to close this. Can and we, move yeah, can we forward. vote on yeah, Sean Pitts? Yeah, yeah, we're going to call for the vote. We're going to call for the vote. Uh, so the motion on the table is an amendment to the main motion. Um, what we're specifically voting on right now is to approve item E and A. E is the, um, I just lost my paper. It's the business raffle, spotlight the businesses, and then item A is the cleanups, whether it's parks or streets. Point of clarification. Mr. Chair, you called me out twice in saying that I left early. What are you doing? So just know that you're doing the same thing, sir. Board member Armstrong, thank you. Thank you. All right. So everyone's clearing the motion right now. Just A and E, cleanups and the uh, spotlight the businesses. Armstrong. No. Carvalho. Aye. Fitzsimmons. Isokane. Aye. McDonald. Aye. McCarney. Aye. Lie. Schubert Kwok. Thompson. Aye. All right, the motion passes with one, two, seven in favor. Thank you. All right, thank you. Now we move on to resolution. Oh, okay. One more. Okay. okay. Oh, who abstained? Okay, I thought there was an A. I'm um, sorry. Also, I'll correct that. So Kevin Lai was in abstention 711. Now we're on the main motion, which is the cleanup and the uh, stand for walking, biking, safety. Did you want to withdraw? I'll, that I'll was withdraw that. Okay. Now we can move on. All right. Okay. Next, we have resolution 2023-005 regarding adoption of a social media presence for downtown Chinatown. I hope everyone had a chance to read it because it's been up for a while. I want to thank both Ross Iskani and um, board member Lai also for putting time into this. Yeah. So do we have any discussions on this? Go ahead, board member Lai. Thank you, Chair. And uh, I do also want to thank member Isakani, new member, to you know, have the initiative to want to draft some resolutions. And it was a bit of a, a journey to get to the point here. And I do hope everyone has read both 2023-005 and its associated uh, 2023-006. But we'll address the number five first. Uh, again, some of the issues that we'll see at play will be questions that I hope that this board tonight will discuss is what do we want in having a social media presence? What do we want to be a degree of engagement with the community? What types of information do we want to be posted to uh, our board uh, Facebook page, if that's what it so choose, it turns out to be, rather? Uh, is this to be more of a static presentation of information to and for our constituents, or is it to be yet another platform where there can be untold amounts of crosstalk that could be potentially derogatory and other things. I think these are the types of things that we need to consider because those parameters and definitions will determine how the page is run, how it's managed, who manages it, who's permitted to do so, and that is a lot of what's addressed in the companion resolution 006. 
Uh, if there are any questions about it, if we need to read in the resolved clauses for the record, we can certainly do that, but these are uh, being displayed on screen and they have been available as was mentioned within the public facing uh, Google Drive for this month. Uh, I'll yield if there's any questions and also to Mr. Isakani because he was a primary drafter. All right, so I'm hoping that everybody went and overlooked and looked at this so that we can just move in and add any discussions we may have and go to a vote. There should be no reasons that we should do anything else. The resolution was well written and we can take a look at it. Um, board member Isakani. I completely agree. I just want to say thank you, uh, Board Member Lai, for, for your uh, mentorship during the process. It was very educational. All right. Does anyone have any discussion on Resolution 2023-005? Go ahead, Board Member Lai. Thank you, Chair. Again, just to clarify, we did see that there were advisory guidelines that are provided by NCO, uh, but we've since bypassed that, and we're going to try to handle this on our own. What that means, though, is that we will need to uh, determine how this uh, Facebook page, it looks like it might indeed be a Facebook group that gets adopted should this resolution be adopted. The reasons for the uh, the new world order, if you will, regarding this are to remove the amount of confusion uh, that we've seen in the past. Uh, there is a clause that basically stipulates the name of a Facebook group that should be elected and appointed by the execution of this resolution. So I believe it's been pre-checked to see if it is available. And uh, and if so, then that certainly is, is in this favor. So the group name is Downtown Chinatown, yeah? It will War 13. That is the group's name, right? Well, I mean, the resolution will define that as the will of the body. So, you know, that if we see one of the resolve clauses that addresses the potential name of the group. And as I understand, Facebook group names can be edited at will, and I'm not sure what that does with the marketing side of things, so. All right, so the name should be the name of our board. Go ahead, board member McCartney. I did see in that, um, I believe that it was abbreviated and it didn't say neighborhood board, it was NB13 uh, something, and maybe that was a placeholder. Um, or maybe I was looking at an abbreviation or a shortcut. Okay, a shortcut for it. Okay, gotcha. Because I would say from a public facing standpoint, the best thing is that it's the name of our neighborhood board. And because you don't have to type it in, which is really where you get into long issues with long names, um, that, that's what we can do. And then picking the key image is also something that we want to consider. All right, so the name of the group, because I created this um, group a while ago, is Downtown Chinatown Neighbor Board 13, which is what we are called. And that's the only name that you can have if you're going to be reflecting this um, group. It has to be that. All right, Kevin Lai, um, before we go to you, I'm going to actually go to Board Member Isakani. Yes, with, with regards to the name, I think the resolution as written is, is rather flexible. The name can be changed. So, um, yeah, we can go with your name, and yeah. I think that perfectly fits with the resolution. Yeah, yeah, so, but if we're talking about, if we're trying to create a group, it should be the name of who we are, which is Downtown Chinatown Neighborhood 413, yeah? Because we're, we're reflecting who we are, okay? okay. Yeah, it's spelled out right. Everything's spelled out right. Well, go ahead, um, board member. Um, first, we're going to go board member Lydon McDonald. Thank you, Chair. So, uh, you know, we are able to entertain amendments to the motion, uh, uh, the resolution as presented. So what's highlighted on screen, it may be difficult to see unless you're watching from a device. Uh, if we need to remove the numero character, which has been characteristic for our board, which kind of sets it apart. We can. I don't know if there is a hyphen in between downtown and Chinatown on the board, or on the Facebook group that is already in place. But I'm this is what it looks like. Excuse me, Chair. Let's post it up to him. I, yes, go I, ahead. I, I just think the way the resolution paragraph is written, it's rather flexible. It, it's, a, I mean, EG stands for, for example, right? So it, it's it's a flexible name. Yeah. I, board, think is, I think this is. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, board member. I, I completely agree. Let's, we can pass it. And if somebody has an objection to the name, we can vote to change the name right. at some okay. other point. I, I would like to ask, though, and as I'm reading it, I want to just make sure. Uh, People apply to the group to be a part of it, and then somebody approves them. No, anybody should be able to just move in. It's, everybody it's can a just public group. It is a public, public. group. So anybody can just anybody comment. can join in. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. So 
We'll take one more thing for discussion, then we're going to go. Mr. Board Member, live, may I ask why all these questions when you wrote this? Chair, this is the exact reason that I proposed having a committee so that this could be addressed. Now, the second, the penultimate resolve clause is important because it defines, at least preliminarily, what the intent of this social media will be for our board. Is this going to be a place where board members will be permitted to post, for example, information that they garner from the community about events that are going on, things that could be deemed factual or uh, researchable or definable, or will this be more open forum for opinions and uh, things that you know could be, again, what we're trying to avoid, confusing to the public or demonstration of bias? Is there any self-policing that we need to do? That's certainly one of the clauses that I've raised. All right, so everyone that's been posting to this page Anyone that's been posting to this page had been posting about things within the community, nothing out of hand or anything else. Uh, to this um, group, I mean, anyone that's been posting to this group has been posting about what's going on in downtown Chinatown and so on, or like um, the um, mill mill trucks that were on Richard Street. Yeah, they've, they've been posting all those things. Um, no one's been saying anything negative. Everybody's doing it right. There is a page that I also have up, and on that page, all I put on the page, and I don't answer any questions, I put on the agenda. That's it. The agenda or anything else that is relevant to us. So we're going to go ahead and well, start moving forward to call a vote because we're wasting time here while we still have so many other things to go through. And that is our problem because people want to go ahead and think way, think, overthink what's going on. All right, so go ahead. Um, Board Member Schubert Kwok. Chair, let's go for a vote. Yeah, do we even have a motion on I can um, make a motion. resolution 2023-05? Everybody had a time to look at this, yeah? Who made the motion? I, I would like to make a motion to approve. Wait a minute. Wait, hold on. Who made this motion? It wasn't me. I know that it hasn't yet. Discussion. It hasn't yet. Yeah, I would like to uh, make a motion that we approve the uh, wording of downtown Chinatown neighborhood board 13 on the Facebook group page. And that the, the uh, chair is the one that administers the, um, the page. I mean, the, the, the group and, and it's open to the public of our community. So, so I have, we should just go ahead and vote. No, yes. We have to make a clarification. The chair is not the one that administers this. Anyone is allowed to add anything into it. This is a public group. So, go ahead, board member. Lott. There's danger in that premise if you haven't read 006. I think we should. Thank you. 006 addresses some of the things that member Schuber Kwok was just discussing. It needs to be read and digested before we vote on, but let's let's dispense with 005 first. There's been a motion and a second, and we've had discussion. I call the question. So what I'm gonna do is at this point, because we have half an hour left, yeah. we're gonna table this. But, yeah. Can I please have clarification? Who made the motion and who seconded? Well, can, I, can I make a new motion, I guess? I need, you guys all understood that you, we opened discussion because a motion was made. We've been doing a lot of things out of order tonight, so let's please bring it back. Did somebody make a motion to adopt resolution 2023-005? I don't believe anybody did. Everyone went around and started talking. Mr. Lai, did you have something to say? Oh, second. And you seconded? Okay, so I write that down, and then if we just want to do a vote. Right. So, the vote will be to adopt resolution 2023-05 as is. Roll call vote. All right. Armstrong. Aye. Carvalho. Aye. Fitzsimmons. Issa Connor. Aye. McDonald. Aye. McCartney. Aye. Lai. Thank you. Schubert Kwok. Thompson. Aye. Thank you. Unanimous. Thank you. Now we're going to move on to resolution 2023 06 regarding preliminary social media tenants for downtown Chinatown neighborhood board 13. Has everyone 
read it as we had asked everyone to read it. This is why we put it into Google Drive. Chair. Yes, um, Board Member McDonald. At this time, I think you may have been, now that we've had all that discussion and we were able to call the vote on the previous thing, I think perhaps at this time with just under half an hour left in the meeting, it may be a good idea to table the rest of the board business and move on to some of the other people who've been waiting to speak. Uh, I move that we table the rest of the board uh, section six board business agenda and move on to section seven monthly reports. Second. For the remainder of the meeting. I second. Okay, we have a second. Do we have any discussions on this? Board member Lai. Thank you, Chair. I'd only ask that we consider rephrasing the main motion rather than the table than to take out of order so that should we find time at the end of the meeting, if a lot of people have left already, we can pick this back up again. Okay, so um, just so everybody understands, I think we should go with G, get it over with, H, get it over with, and I. And the reason why I'm stating this, okay? So after that, then monthly reports will be coming up. Then we have... Um, Elected officials. Elected officials already know that this meeting may have gone over time because I had addressed this with every single elected official. So the elected officials have given us their monthly reports. And if anyone has any questions, then Dylan's going to write down these questions for them. So majority of your elected officials are not here. There may be a couple that are here because they said they will come just to check it out to make sure. But they have been warned of this, and they have um, sent us in the reports which we have uploaded to the Google Drive. So go ahead, Board Member McDonald. Thank you, Chair. So just to clarify, I'll re-clarify the motion then, which is on the table and been seconded to table uh, board business agenda items G, H, and I until uh, until the end of the meeting, if such, if there is time at the end of the meeting, if not, then to the next uh, scheduled meeting. And it's been second. Uh, strong, you, so, so I'm seconding that? I'm still seconding that. Okay, discussions. Thank you. Yep, any discussions? All right, hearing none, we'll go straight to the roll call vote. Right. Motion on the table is to table. G H and I. Item six, G H I, and move on to agenda item seven, monthly reports. Um, table this item until the end of the meeting. If not, next meeting. Armstrong. Aye. Carvalho. Nay. Fitzsimmons. One more time. Thank you. Isokane. Aye. McDonald. Aye. McCartney. Lie. Nay. Cooper Clark. Thompson. All right. All right. Motion passes with five in favor, four no. All right. So we'll go ahead and go straight to monthly reports. A board of water supply. Oh, hi. It's Iris. Good evening. Uh, just want to read July is smart irrigation month when outdoor water use typically increases. But then I'm normally hot and dry summer and below normal rainfall. Please do your part to use less water by I have four different things. You can install a weather-based irrigation controller. So this device uses local weather stations to adjust your irrigation systems operating times based on the plant's water needs. Then you can apply for a rebate for up to $100 from, from the board water supply. The second thing would be install a rain barrel, which collects rainwater and holds it for later use, such as on your lawn. You can use it on your lawns, gardens, or indoor plants. This, you can apply for a $40 rebate from the Board of Water. Uh, third thing could be is water before 9 a.m. and after 5 p.m. And lastly is inspect your irrigation system for leaks or misdirected or broken sprinkler heads. I just mentioned four, but there are more things to read at the boardofwatersupply.com black sash irrigation. So that's it for my um, announcement. Uh, thank you, Iris. I do appreciate it. Thanks. Is there anybody in our lobby or on a web page that would like to address iris at this time from board of water supply see none hearing none do we have any board members that would like to address this hearing none seeing none iris thank you very much and once again see you next month thank you thank you you're very welcome next we have safe haven greg payton 
Greg? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair and Board Members. My name is Greg Payton. I serve as uh, Executive Director for Mental Health Kakua. One of our programs is Safe Haven, as you know, located at 126 Powahi Street in Powahi Holly. Um, MHK, we are moving our Safe Haven clients out of the building by the end of July. The of the additional 42 low income tenants, we have 11 tenants remaining who will move to other Oahu locations by the end of summer. Anton Krucke with the city and county of Honolulu is helping us to coordinate communication with the tenants. And uh, we will reduce our presence uh, in Chinatown by about 60%. That's my report. If you have any questions, be glad to take them. All right, thank you. Do we have anyone in our lobby or on our website that would like to address um, Greg Payton on Safe Haven? Seeing none, hearing none, anyone from our board? Hearing none, saving none. Greg, thank you very much. And Greg, can you please do me a favor? Can we get your reports um, at least 24 hours ahead? Because we're getting it like about two o'clock in the afternoon on the day of of this meeting, yeah? So if you could get it to me 24 hours so I can get this into our Google Drive, I would appreciate it. Thank Be you. Glad to do that. All right, thank you. Next, we have item C, Chinatown Business Community Association, CBCA. Shulan Schubert, Kwok, please. Thank you, thank you, Chair. I'm gonna be very brief. Uh, we held our meeting on uh, June the 13th, and then we will have our next meeting on July 13th. Uh, discussion is usually Chinatown issues, um, safety and homeless issues and how we can help them. That's the end of my report. Thank you. All right, um, thank you. And Shulon, um, same as Greg, if we could get it 24 hours, I would appreciate it because usually between two and four, I'm so busy on the day off. Yeah, I appreciate it. No, no, thank, thank you. I'm just letting you guys know just as a courtesy, I appreciate it. Thank you. Next, we will have Chinatown Improvement District, Lee Stack. Lee Stack, are you here? I am here. Thank you, Lee, and thank you for your patience. I do appreciate it. Uh, good evening, everyone. So I wanted to report um, what we worked on this past month, and one of them is we were contacted by a business about the city tearing up the sidewalk, the old historic sidewalk, the 140-year-old pavers in front of their business. And so we did reach out to the um, managing director and the council member, and we worked on that all day and suggested that they bring the pavers back, but it looks like it never, it didn't happen, unfortunately. Um, but, you know, we were concerned that something like this would happen when people talk about revitalizing Chinatown and they look at it through a development lens rather than a historic preservation lens. This kind of thing can happen because these are just seen as old pavers and they're not seen as the historic artifacts that they really are that are important to the district. So that was one thing we worked on. Um, we also responded to public requests for information on policy issues from people on other islands this past month. Um, so that was interesting and exciting to work with with other um, groups um, across the state. Um, we also wanted to report that our Autumn Moon and Lantern Festival is coming up on September 29th. Um, once again, we'll be in Smith Baratania Park and throughout the district working with businesses as we did last year. September 29th is also the last supermoon of 2023. Um, so we're excited about that. We invite the board to participate since the board is looking for events to, um, to partner with the community and participate. We'd be happy for the board's participation. I also wanted to say that with empty storefronts, I, I believe Kevin Lai mentioned something like that. A lot of times things like crime and empty storefronts, people tend to look at just Chinatown. But if you look, if you walk through Fort Street Mall, you walk through other areas of downtown, whether it's the pandemic and people using Zoom, but this is a, this is getting to be a widespread problem. I don't think it's just a problem in Chinatown. And that's the report. All right, thank you. Ms. Stack, does anyone in our lobby have any questions for Ms. Stack? And does anyone on our website have any questions? Seeing none, hearing none, we'll go to our board. Any board members have any questions for Ms. Stack? Hearing none, seeing none, thank you, Ms. Stack. We'll see you next month, and I'll actually send you out an email. Okay, thank you. 
All right, next we have Neighborhood Citizens Patrol. Kevin Lai, please. Thank you, Chair. We'll blitz through some observations from the last two months. We didn't have a chance to present last uh, last month, as you'll recall. Um, one thing we'll notice is a lot of folks uh, who may be covered up, covered their heads with some uh, sheets or towels or jackets, and we're just trying to get an assessment. Perhaps some of those in the industry can know uh, what this means, if it's trying to encapsulate or capture some of the smoke or the combustibles that that may be at play underneath, but it really is widespread. And if it's something that we need to address or find uh, you know, a partner to work with these types of folks in particular, so be it. Uh, but it is it is happening all over the place. We have a lot of people that continue to ignore our, our traffic safety laws and crossing the street against crosswalks. So please, if you're driving in the neighborhood, be very careful. Uh, I saw this lady attempt to take on a bus on King Street, and fortunately it turned out okay. Uh, a lot of folks are just hanging out at the bus stops themselves and unfortunately blocking those who have other uh, mobility issues. Uh, fortunately, HPD was fast to come to address that gentleman. Folks are making their way to the library, but getting sidetracked by uh, the goodies that are available on the side. And again, some of the trash cans that we found, uh, we've talked about having ones that are kind of one-way trash cans that can't be have trash pulled out of them, but still uh, you know, people will find a way to uh, do what they can to do their own version of, of cleaning up, I guess. Uh, be aware when you're walking around, we found people that are kind of lurking or, or hanging out in the bushes or on the sides where you may not expect them to be, so just be aware. And uh, also bicycles and scooters uh, on the sidewalks and then occasionally uh, one person riding or carrying or maybe borrowing an exercise uh, bicycle rather, as we've seen in the past, uh, the Bicky bikes tied up to uh, fences and otherwise. Uh, the gentleman that carved sticks on Bethel Street is still there, but seems to be a pretty nice guy. I've spoken with him a couple of times. Uh, I've spoken with Member Trooper Kwok about the progress at Kekuliki Mall and seeing if the patrons there are able to make it to the storefronts and continue their purchasing and keep the economy rolling. Um, graffiti. Uh, yeah, a lot of this is just continuing to expand and get uh, vulgar. Uh, there are names that are repeated, so maybe these are uh, folks that could be identified. Uh, I remember painting over this wall about a year ago, one of our paint-a-thons, and I think it's pretty inevitable you know, what was going to happen there. Um, but FITO is in town. FITO is here and there and everywhere. Uh, also, we see CME, if anyone can let us know what this represents. I was going to ask um, Dr. Thompson if this is a new marketing campaign for our continuing medical education requirements. Somehow I don't think so, but they are definitely everywhere. And then Magnolia is in town and writing some pretty disturbing remarks all over the place as well. So, you know, we need to find ways to address and treat these people as they see. Uh, folks continue to panhandle. Again, the violation here is not panhandling, but failing to make forward progress through a marked intersection. And uh, we need to find ways to encourage folks to do the right thing. Noise issues, we've talked about uh, leaf blowers, although... Uh, Foster Botanical Gardens is still closed. They do still continue to leaf blow. Uh, however, the private groups that we've spoken with and had testimony at our meeting in May, uh, I'd say there is some improvement. Uh, however, not always the case, so I am continuing to work with them. The right panel here is of the Portuguese um, Square Park next to the Cathedral on Fort Street Mall. And thanks to uh, Council Member Dos Santos Tam for giving us some direction about how and when this could possibly be addressed perhaps with acquisition of this space by the uh, the church. Avian report, no doubt about it. Uh, the birds are not going away anytime soon, but they are continuing to multiply. Thanks a lot to our uh, overly friendly and helpful uh, co-residents who just don't seem to get the message that the birds don't need us. Um, I showed you an image, not this image, the last time I spoke of birds at Costco. I spoke with the assistant manager at the Costco, and he said that uh, the bird, rather the Department of Health has said that unless the bird is walking in an open vat of ketchup, mustard, or relish, it's okay, and they can't do anything about it. I said, well, you know, those four little perches there look perfect, and I bet you when we're not looking, at least one bird is going to be sitting on that mustard dispenser, and who knows what happens when you rub your hot dog up against that. So, again, we've got to reach out to the vector control branch and talk to Ms. Simmons and get her to do an assessment. Um you know, my plan of see a rooster, eat a rooster didn't work out, so you know, we're trying to get them to get saved otherwise, uh, but we'll see how it goes. And again, encourage everyone to join us on the second Tuesday of each month, 7 p.m., Diamond Head Tower Lobby, Kakui Plaza. Set your GPS to 1261 Fort Street. Join us and have a good time. Thank you, Chair.
Uh, no, no, thank you very much. I think if we can keep these reports to Chinatown and downtown, that's, I understand, Costco is actually Kalihi Palama. And Mr. The chair there, Mr. Ken Farms, gets really mad when we, um, when we <laughs> intrude on his area. He's gone out of me a lot of times. But anyway, but thank you, because that was comical with the one with the bird. Thank you. Appreciate that. It was funny. All right. Uh, next, we'll move on to Honolulu Authority for Rapid Transportation. So, uh, Mr. Cho will not be here, but but if Mr. Watson has something quick to say, I would appreciate it. Thank you, Chair. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, Patrick Watson here with Honolulu Consulting Public Information Management and on behalf of the Kalusho Construction, I'm here to provide you a brief update about the work that Kalusho is doing for downtown utility relocation on the Hart Project. So Kalusho continues downtown utilities relocation work, including HECO and Hawaiian Telecom duct bank installation at the intersection of Nimitz Highway and Ava Street and at Nimitz Highway and River Street through August. And part of the work taking place in that area also includes the construction for the installation of street light equipment underground uh, along the sidewalk areas and outside lanes on the Malka side of Nimitz uh, between River Street and Smith Street. And the last area I wanted to point out was the intersection of Halekuila Street and Punchbowl Street where Kalusho is trenching across that intersection for an underground utility duct bank uh, and it's scheduled for completion by November, if not sooner, before the city and county uh, repaves that intersection of, as part of their street rehabilitation project. So the city worked out the scheduling with Hart and Calucho to allow Calucho to get the work done before they have to come through and repave that area, because it would be a shame if the city repaved it and then Calucho had to cut through it. So that's the reason they're doing that work now and they're making a lot of good progress. So it should be a lot sooner than November, but that was the expected date. And that concludes my update. Thank you very much and have a wonderful evening. Mahalo. Chair, Chair, I have a question. Yeah, yeah, uh, hold on, give me one second. All right, thank you very much, I do appreciate it. So do we have any questions from people in our lobby or on our web? Hearing none, seeing none, go ahead, board member uh, McCarney. Thank you, Chair. Um, Patrick, so my, my only question is Nimitz is really a mess. Um, I think you guys are doing a good job of trying to manage the traffic, but you mentioned repaving of Halekawila and at Richards. Do it, you have- a, Actually, Halekawila and Punchbowl. Oh, and Punchbowl, oh, yeah. okay. Do you yeah. have any idea how long Nimitz is gonna be torn up or is it? are you gonna do your initial work and then it'll be repaved and then later on it will be torn up again for the columns? Well, they uh, typically schedule the work for the excavation, the installation of the utility duct banks underground, and then the last phase of the work in those areas is the repaving and restoration work. So um, it's not as if they're gonna do it all at one time. They're working uh, all the way from Dillingham and Ka'ahi Street. That's the only intersection they interface right now at Dillingham, and it goes all the way down to Kaka'ako at Mother Waldron Park. So there's multiple sites that are uh, under construction simultaneously. And um, because the area in Dillingham and Ka'ahi was like the first one to begin construction, that's probably where the, it will, uh, they will conclude their work first. But the work is scheduled to be uh, continuous until the fourth quarter of 2024 in all these zones. Um, but they always strive to get done sooner than later. So it might not be that long for every area, but that's the general um, yeah. announcement about that work. And we have this business and community meeting coming up next Wednesday night at 6 p.m. I put the link in the chat along with our weekly e-blast information that we publish every week. So if you guys want to sign up for both, that would be ideal. All right, thank you. So um, Laurie, actually um, it's um, under in the Google Documents under V2 dash F that uh, parentheses A and V V double I dot F parentheses B and you'll be able to see the link in A yeah and then I did put in um their express link so it's all there but um thank you very much so just in case because I'm going to try to catch that meeting on Wednesday night yeah. All right, thank you, um, Mr. McDonald, please. 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Watson, for being here, for sure. And I, I just wanted to add that I think it's adorable that you mentioned a minute ago that you like to get things done sooner than later. That's a very, uh, I really don't even know what to say about that. But um, it's my understanding that the rail, the rail was scheduled to open this month, and uh, it has not. Do we, are we just not going to talk about that? The rail no. is open. But not yes. in this area. It's the west uh, side from Aloha Stadium to uh, Kapolei. And people, the, it's open to the public. People can ride it. Yes. Yeah, I rode it yesterday with my family. What are what are the fees? Are, what are the fees? Is it included in a bus fare? Yeah. So the Holo card, which allows you to transfer between the rail and the bus, um, is the way that you pay to get through the system. And I think they cap it at $7 or $7.50 a day. So you can transfer as much as you want up to that point. That's as much as you're gonna pay per day. Um, but yeah, it was, I, I, I went the prior week, prior to the public opening, and then it was open to the public for free for four days, five days. And then it just, yesterday was the first paid day that you could ride using your holo card and you have to, actually had to pay. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Um, so, yeah, McDonald, we've all been riding it. I don't know. I've ridden it. I know Sri Lanka's ridden it. Lauren Laurie's ridden it. We all ridden it. So, it's been open. So, is there any more questions? Ah, not here, seeing any. Hearing none. Thank you very much, Mr. Watson. You have a great day. All right. Well, Thank you. you too. Thank you. All right. So, we actually found a little bit of a time slot. We're going to go to item. Eight elected officials. Governor Josh Green's candidate, Representative Sean Hanamoto, is actually on vacation, but he did get the information. He did send someone to be there and just monitor just in case. But board member Lai, Kevin Lai, referred reference SB5888 SD2, HD1, and CD1 relating to excessive noise, which would create a pilot program to use noise detection traffic cameras to address excessive traffic noise in the urban area. Board member lies asking whether the D state DOT would be engaged if any such monitoring equipment was to be placed at any intersection of Vine Boulevard, example, Nuano Avenue. He further stated that un or insufficient muffled vehicles regularly traverse up or down Nuano Avenue. Through this intersection and any semblance of conveying that there might be a consequences for vehicular violation of state statutes regarding illegal hornet engine noises or hyperpublic hyperpublic stereo use to prove helpful. It is understood that these may turn out to be city slash county level enforcement issues. But the board has seen that certain roadways fall under the purview of the state. As to that question, they have reached out on um, reached out to JI at DOT on June 22nd, follow up on 7-5, July 5th. Still pending a response. No response, Kevin, to your question. As to the second question, board member Kevin Lai is questioning the purpose of the gap gravel pits beds located between the state capitol and Iolani Palace. The answer to that is the gravel pit beds are for the Diamond Headside Pool waterproofing project now underway. Anyone have any questions for the governor's official, Sean Hanamoto, can either send it directly to him, myself, and or Lai, and we'll go ahead and send it to him. Okay. As for elected official, Mayor Rick Langiotti's representative, Ian, they will not be here today. Go ahead. Just the report is in the drive. The mayor's newsletter is in the drive, as well as the follow-up responses to questions raised at the last meeting. Thank you. No, this wasn't in the drive. This part wasn't in the drive. This is separate. So, as next for City Council District 6, Tyler De Santos. Since he's here, let's get him up. Thank you, Tyler. Hi, everyone. We have six minutes left. So I have a newsletter. It went out. Y'all have it. I'm here to answer any questions. Thanks. Go, go ahead. Do um, you have anything you want to nope. say? No. Go ahead, um, Board Member Lai. 
Thank you, Chair. Uh, Councilman, do you have any recollection of City Council Resolution 23-136, which I believe Chair Waters introduced about an inquiry into the status of neighbor board election procedures? I'm not sure if that's tracked at all. Yes, so we had a hearing about that um, a few two weeks ago. Um, what we are going to do is Chair Waters and I are actually going to submit a letter to the Executive Secretary asking for them to put a requirement for a post-election report into the neighborhood plan. So that way we don't have to do this every time there's an election, it automatically comes to us. Um, in the meantime though, I think um, the executive secretary does have some information about uh, what happened in the Portlock area um, and then some of those you know, issues that they encountered. Uh, thank you. Um, board member Armstrong. Uh, not to, uh come out from left field with this question, but has the city or you or anyone in the administration had a substantive conversation about the redevelopment of the Walmart downtown? So on f June 30th, the uh, realtor that's been working with Walmart, the, the real estate company um, closed the bids. I don't know what happened. I don't know how many bids have come in, but I know that was the cutoff date. So what we'll do is I'll um, email them and see at least what came in, if anything, um, and I'll report back at the next meeting. All right, thank you. Board Member McDonald. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you for being here. Um, I was understand that you're recently back from a trip to Europe. Yes. Is that right? Yes. And I'm, I'm curious, uh, it was I and the uh, money, part of the funds for you to go were gifted yes, by the, the all of it. And so I'm curious uh, what you've learned, uh, what you were able to bring back to us. Yeah, so I'm actually uh, going to be submitting a written report soon. There were 12 delegates, um, 10 from California, one me from Hawaii, and one from the Federal Railway Administration in DC. Um, we're actually supposed to be collaborating on kind of a joint report, but major highlights, uh, it was to Switzerland's, um, Switzerland's, you know, mass transit system is, is way ahead of ours, but a couple things that Switzerland does, it's different than other countries. Um, they, for many places and many routes, don't even have a timetable because the, the buses and trains come so frequently. And I think that's really important because people here, especially on, you know, as they commute, um, worry about timing their trip but with enough frequency and especially downtown you know down king street hotel street capilani boulevard with enough frequency you can get people into the notion that you don't even need to like worry about your trip you just go for the suburban lines um that's something we got to worry about a little bit more um they another really key part is just great public spaces and i know that this is something that this board has really been concerned about uh with sun yat sen park Thank you, Ernest, and uh, Lions Club there. But also, you know, the mayor's been working on uh, River Street and just creating sort of public spaces that are good but can't be monopolized by the homeless. And Switzerland has done a really good job of putting in sort of the public furniture for that. Um, in terms of transit, they also approach, I think one key thing, and this is sort of technical, is they approach the, um, so here we have the bus, which is actually a separate company, Oahu Transit Services is contracted with the city. They treat their um, relationship with their vendors differently and kind of backwards from the way, way we do. Um, the city purchases, basically the city of Zurich looks at it as purchasing a level of service from their vendors. Whereas here we just sort of like give them money and like they sort of do their thing. Um, and this helps them to have a lot more accountability for timing, number of passengers, et cetera. Uh, but we'll put it all in writing. No, there's no follow-up yep. questions. But I've got two. We've got two minutes. You had a time. We're going to go down next. To go ahead. I'm Sean Fitzsimmons. Um, awesome job uh, shutting down the game rooms in Kalihi. Uh, as you know, our um, our our board has been trying to struggle with the issue uh, between like you know whether or not we are are attracting homeless uh, due to the services we provide or if there's other reasons. Um, of course, one of the reasons that popped into my head that. Uh, are the game rooms that are in operation in downtown and Chinatown. Have you done anything to focus on shutting down the game rooms in Chinatown and downtown? Because I know there's a yeah. couple right up yeah. the street. If um, I think if we as the public know, I know Narco Vice also knows, but it's a process. I think the highlights for the Kalihi game rooms is the approach that the Kalihi, so District 5, we're in District 1 for HPD, but District 5's taken a different approach, which they're testing out. And I think island-wide, it's really gonna help. What they've done is, when HPD goes in and raids a game room, 
immediately after, a few hours after they've cleared everything out, they bring in DPP, they bring in HFD, and they cite for building permit violations, electrical violations, because they got to bring in all this new electricity for the games to plug into, fire code, they bring in walls and lock the doors and everything. And so that way they cite the landlord. And I think in the past when they've raided, it's just been like whoever's in the room gets arrested, but the landlord can just like get a new operator in the next day. And so this way it makes the, the landlords pay. Uh, me and Councilmember Tupola out on the west side, they've got a lot of game rooms. We're actually going to be introducing some new legislation next month, possibly the, uh, in, possibly the month after, depending on if we can get it in time, to add uh, a few new tools to HPD's um, toolbox. All right. Um, thank yeah. you. It's 9 o'clock, everyone. I'm going to call this meeting over at this time. Thank you very much. You. I'll, I'll send you my questions. By yeah, email. I'll thank be around you. also. Yeah. yeah, thank you very much. So this, this meeting... Is now called over announcements downtown Chinatown neighborhood board number 13 is tentatively scheduled to hold its next meeting on Thursday, August 3rd, 2023 at 6 p.m. at Keili Okalani Middle School and virtually via WebEx. Rebroadcast of downtown neighborhood, downtown Chinatown neighborhood board number 13 meetings are scheduled on Olelo Channel 49 every third Thursdays at 9 p.m. as well as 6 a.m. on the second and fourth Saturdays of each sir. month. An archive of past meetings may be found at olelo.com. You can go ahead and search it on Olelo. Find the monthly archives of handouts and reference materials concerning the downtown Chinatown area board number 13 on our Google Drive. Thank you very much. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you.